she does get bad breath. It have some girl and them always vex. When them get a man vex, they want to bribe him with sex. It have some girl who does fuss and fret. Bag a muffin here and waste none of them may I forget. Some girl who does only want to study themselves. Like they will revolve around them and nobody else. Give me, give me attitude. You know that I would. No man no want a girl who can cook good food. A girl who like back chat and always rude. Who walk in the street but them dress semi nude. Just the other day a boy sing who get phone. But a girl answer back and then he start carry on. I keep a girl some man can keep a girl on. I keep a girl some man can keep a girl. I keep a girl some man can keep a girl. But this is something some man don't understand. They feel there's only money what well, them girl them I want. Some girl want a man to show compassion. Good morning and welcome to the Hazy Crawford Stadium for the uh, enlisted meet here put on by the National Association of Athletics Administrations. This is the 2024 track and field series number three here at the Hazy Crawford Stadium. Developmental meets uh, taking us through the track and field season here in Trinidad and Tobago. It's a pleasure to bring you the action here on Wave TV. I'm Vidya Ramphal alongside Javon former Cats athlete, and it's a great pleasure to have you here with us. So, good looking morning. forward to yeah. today. Okay, good morning. Thank you, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, we have an eventful day, running from 11 to 3 p.m. Hopefully, games. Well, we yeah, we do have an event. This is the women's 100 meter hurdles, and it's one of those unusual ones. Just one athlete, just Kiris Gomez of IJ Fastlane. So far, so good for these three, four hurdles, and looking pretty good. And with uh, four remaining here, let's see if she can pull off a time that she will be happy with. Of course, and here she is coming across the line. And uh, well, the clock hadn't. Uh, I wonder if it's. Uh, there's the clock. It's now been switched up, so let's see what the time is for her in the 100 uh, meter hurdles. Of course, uh, she's operating with the hurdles at uh, 0.8. 3.8 seconds uh, an athletes that we've seen with IG pass lane uh, over the uh, over the course of these meets here, Javon. Yeah, it seemed like a very comfortable run for her. I mean, she cleared each and every hurdle with ease. Yeah, she certainly did, and we will have, of course, coming up right after the boys under 20. 110 meter hurdles. Two athletes involved in this one from Dabadi, Jeremiah Francis and Jabari Richards of Toko Tafak. That's coming up next. There are three hurdles events in all. And then after we go on to the uh, field events, there's the high jump, triple jump, and uh, small matter of the, uh, no small matter of the women's javelin going on at the moment. So just the adjustments going on at this time, and uh, what's happening is that, as you can see, uh, there's the warm-up. Uh, so several of the athletes are warming up for the long jump, which is taking place right in front of us today. The last time we were here, it was out on the left, so it was very difficult to see, but now we get a, it's, yeah. it's in the full glare here, Javon. And what they're doing now is they're making the adjustments to the hurdles. Of course, the boys under 20, the hurdle height is 0 0.991 meters uh, for the next event. Yes, that's, a, that's a bit lower, or is it a bit higher? Uh, it's going to be higher, of course. Yeah. Higher. Okay. All right, so how many athletes we have lined up for the boys under 20, 110 meter hurdles? Well, just a couple of them, uh, Jeremiah Francis and Jabari Richards. And after that, uh, there'll be a second event uh, this will be the men's 110 meter hurdles. Three athletes are listed to compete in that one, so not a huge amount of uh, action in the hurdles here today. And uh, as we can see down the line, and, and, and certainly as we do have a little bit of a lull in terms of the action yeah. on the track, uh, just gives us that little bit of time to talk a little bit to, uh, about what's hap what happened at Carifta Games a couple of weekends ago. Yes, definitely. Another good performance for Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, excellent performance, number three on the medal middle standings which is excellent 
It certainly was. Uh, just to bring you up to date in case you're not aware, uh, the Charybda Games in Grenada 2024, 30th March to the 1st of April, taking place at the Athletic Stadium, named after the Grenadian immortal, uh, Kirani James, a former uh, champion, former world champion, Jamaica of course. Champion, yeah. And uh, the medal table, uh, well, Jamaica, of course, winning. Uh, they've won <laughs> just about every one yes. of these Charybda Games, and rightly so, 45 gold medals. Uh, Bahamas second, Trinidad and Tobago in third, four gold medals, 11 silver, and 12 bronze medals. How did you uh, rate the performance by TNT? Really not bad. Um, the games is really a games where a lot of the athletes, you know, get to showcase their talents, and I, I think they actually did that just that. Yeah, they certainly did. 25 medals the last time around in 2023. Yeah. 27 this time around, uh, four gold medals. Uh, one of the surprise packages in this particular uh, Clare of the Games was, in fact, Guyana, yeah. who won four gold medals, three silver medals, and one bronze medal. And uh, that was surprising uh, for many. I, I don't think for anybody in Guyana, because uh, the amount of investment that has gone into sport now yes, with yes. the discovery of oil in Guyana, that yes, certainly yes. has changed things around. <laughs> Yes, yes. I think the entire Caribbean, uh, you could see a change in some, most of the athletes. Uh, we have athletes doing pretty well, especially on the international stage. Yeah, certainly. And uh, we've seen that all around with Ghana. That, uh, yeah. And it certainly does present a tale that all Caribbean countries can learn from. If you invest the money in the athletes, yes. the yes. results will come. Exactly. Uh, of course, it has to be channeled through proper coaching, through proper, proper yes, administrative yes. structures and all that. Exactly, yeah. Of course, you can't you can't forget the the little upset that we had with the men the boys four by four by one hundred meter, yes. where Trinidad and Tobago upset Jamaica, and it had a little riff between the two uh, teams, where the Jamaican athletes called the Trinidad athletes soft, and the Trinidad athletes retained the fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's all part of it. Um, uh, in fact, uh, just to quote that wonderful pop song by Billy Joel, we didn't start the fire. Exactly. It was always burning. <laughs> and if you go back in history, one remembers all the way back, 1966, the big rivalry yes. between Trinidad and Tobago and, uh, and uh, Jamaica that started in, at the Olympic Games, 48-52, uh, yeah, wow. uh, 56, and, uh, and all of those times. And then in 66, it erupted wow. at the Commonwealth Games in, wow. in Kingston. Yeah, so it goes back a long way. That's wow. that, that's not a new thing. Yeah. I mean, it's always good to have friendly rivalry in the sport. You know, it brings some excitement and some anticipation into the sport. You know, yeah, it certainly does. So they're still setting up for the hurdles at the meantime, and also the uh, competition in the javelin, javelin started. That was the throw by Cheyenne Williams of Stallion. Uh, Cheyenne, they're getting in a throw, and estimated maybe just about uh, 15 between 15 and 20 meters or so. Of course, we don't have the benefit of the uh, correct distances from here, but we can keep you up to date on who is throwing at uh, the moment. Uh, the field for the women's javelin, just to give it to you. Francois George, the unattached thrower. Uh, she is in blue. Cheyenne Williams, you just saw. Monique London of IG Fastlane. Gwendolyn Smith, the record holder for Trinidad and Tobago of TNT Masters Association, Sierra Mitchell of Stallion, Suzanne Garcia of TTRRC, and Kayla Charles of UTT Patriots. They make up the seven athletes competing in uh, the javelin here today. And that is uh, Monique London of IG Fastlane uh, with the latest throw. And uh, still a lot of these athletes, as you can see there, uh, in development. Yeah. I, I, I I think she needed a bit more of a run-up because we have an entire field ahead in order to get a proper throw, you know, and she touched like about four, four steps and then threw the javelin. So they are the hurdles uh, as the javelin is going on. That's the women's javelin throw, the 600 gram spears as they use. Uh, the boys are setting up. Well, actually, they're going to have a combined event here uh, boys under 20, 110 meter hurdles. Uh, we'll have in lane two, Jeremiah Francis and, and this pause here as I believe that is in fact uh, Gwendolyn Smith. And uh, Gwendolyn Smith. Uh, Pretty good distance there from her. Yeah. Couldn't quite get a stick into the ground, but it's still being marked. 
Yeah, the javelin, certainly a lot of interest in the javelin now, especially since Keyshawn Walcott uh, yeah. became a gold medalist. And even before that, he was triple Karifta champion. Yes. And uh, of course, there, just before the Karifta Games, there was that a very sad story about the about Tariq Horsford, who is now retired yes, from yes, the javelin. Yes, retired, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it, not, not many details are given as to why yeah. uh, his, uh, but for medical reasons, for he's medical had to reasons, retire, and yeah. that's very sad. Yeah, it's really sad. You know, a lot of medical issues are attacking these athletes left, right, and center. It's yeah. just to stay healthy and... Yeah, many had felt that he would be the uh, heir apparent yeah. to yeah. Keyshawn Wong, but unfortunately, that is now that is now ended. So we're just about ready for the the athletes still getting themselves ready here for the 110 meter hurdles. And uh, why there was that adjustment was that it's going to be a combined race. I believe it, that's what they're going to do. And uh, the hurdles for the boys under 20 is actually 0 0.991 meters, and yeah. uh, that for the men is 1.067 1 meters. meters. Yep. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, there's another throw, and uh, yeah, the taking place here at uh, the Javelin. And just in case you're watching track and field for the first time, very unlikely, but uh, it is uh, an event that has evolved from an instrument that was used in everyday use in the hunting and warfare. If you go back to ancient Greece and the Olympic Games of 708 BC, you and I weren't even thought yeah. about that. <laughs> uh, it's been part of the Olympic Games program since 1908 for 1908. men wow. and 1932 for women. Wow. And uh, that's certainly a long time. Here is the UTT athlete. Much better throw here from yes. Kayla Charles. That's the longest we've seen so far. Yeah, Kayla Charles out in front. So really an excellent throw as well. Sticking into the that's what we're looking for. So, you know, with, with the hurdles, these athletes, are, some of the athletes have, have really respected along the way because it's not just 100 meters, it's 100 meter with hurdles, you know, so it's a combine of speed, strength, you know, and flexibility, most yes. importantly. That's right. No small amount of agility required for this, yeah. for this event, indeed. <laughs> And another one of those torturous events. We won't even talk about the 400 meter hurdles just oh, yet. Right, no. But here's the field. <laughs> Jeremiah Francis in two, Jabari Richards in three, Ruben Walters of Memphis in four, Tyrese Rollins of Neon Wolves in five, and uh, Jabari, well, just Jabari Richards in, and uh, Justin Gay, Guy of, and here they go here. And the first man to get to the hurdle is uh, Walters of Memphis, and he is already uh, going out towards the lead here, but he's challenged on the outside by Justin Guy, and Guy now looks like he's taken the lead and will get across the line first, and it is Guy out in front, Walter Ruben Walters of Memphis uh, finishing along in second place, and uh, he, had a, he put on a sizable lead there, Walters, at one point, but Guy just got his rhythm going yeah, well he enough. Got it, he got it. Excellent run there by Guy, just demanding the field today. So that's uh, actually the end of the hurdles for today. Just the three races, and uh, they're now just setting down the hurdles, so we'll have uh, another bit of a lull. So we'll head back to the javelin again here. Uh, just to review, Guy, 13.94, Walters, 14.11, and Rollins uh, finishing in third place there. We'll just confirm his time for you. But, yeah, so Francis, 14.74, he finished in fifth. And Richard, 17.29, uh, well, he was in uh, sixth place. So the two athletes on the inside finishing fifth and sixth. Uh, so the boys under 20, Francis, 14.72, Richards, 17.29. Well, that's the end of the hurdles uh, for today. Uh, women's javelin still taking place, still going on at the moment. And uh, we'll bring you up to date with that. Uh, coming up, we'll have, of course, the men's high jump. The women's triple jump is also taking place alongside the men's triple jump. Now, this is a, uh, this event, as it's a one-day event, yeah. 
it's going to provide some challenges, not only for the organizers, but for the coaches and the athletes. Yep. Because if you run the 100, 200, it's a very little chance that you're going to run both today. Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, it should be smooth because that, when, when it comes to track and field training, these events is, is things that you run back to back for one day. You know, so it's all conditioning and the strength of the athletes are going to be tested today if they're running both events. And, that, and um, you're speaking from experience. You've been through the fires oh, at the Abilene course, Wildcats, of haven't course, you? Of course, of course. Running 600 into 400 into 300 into 101 training session. Um, <laughs> I can see that pain on your face. Just uh, as you remember you, that. When you're done, that's it. <laughs> So women's javelin still going on, and uh, Gwendolyn Smith about to get her second throw in here. Let's see if she can reproduce the throw from the first event. First throw, yep, and she does. In fact, it's a bit better here, and uh, she has now taken over the lead. Uh, longest throw so far of the day to Gwendolyn Smith. Well-known yeah. name, of course, in uh, the javelin in Trinidad and Tobago. I, th I think it will be very effective for her to work on her run-up because she, bent, she, she stalled a bit twice. You know, once she has a smooth run-up, she's going to throw further for sure. Yeah, so Gwendolyn, of course, I'm sure she's uh, working. At the, we have the Masters events coming up later on in the season. She, of course, has won many, many uh, events over the years. Yeah. Uh, all over the world, one of the best known names in women's javelin in Trinidad and Tobago, former national champion, of course, uh, in the women's uh, javelin. And uh, that was, uh, she did that actually in 2011. She was the women's national champion, uh, a throw of 40.75, which she set on the 14th of August 2011. That's her best uh, so far. 40, 40, you said? Four, four zero in four fact, zero. yeah. Okay. Suzanne uh, Garcia of TTR Trinidad and Tobago uh, RRC, latest uh, to throw there. So still an emerging, uh, we, Trinidad and Tobago has never put any woman into the javelin um, at the Olympic Games. So it's uh, certainly an area that uh, will need to be worked on. Yes, definitely. And as you said, Olympic Games, did you know we are actually 103 days away oh, from yeah. the Olympic Day Games? And uh, this, this, uh, just to tell you also, the men's high jump has started. Uh, there are three involved, and the, that one you would have seen there uh, was Christian Latouche of UTT Patriots, and he was the uh, putting on a legal jump. There's also Isaiah Jones of uh, Tobago Falcons and Jabari Richards of Toko Tafak. Those are the three athletes competing in the high jump. High jump is another event that I really respect, the agility of these athletes and the training that they would have to go through to attain such heights. Of course, the high jump, uh, a popular event here in the Caribbean world record holder is from the Caribbean, the Spanish-speaking Caribbean, of course, mm -hmm. Javier Sotomayor, yeah. won Olympic gold at uh, 1992 in Barcelona. Cuban great uh, still has the world record at 2.45 meters. Uh, that was back in 1993. And if you want a reference as to how high that is, look at your doorways, wherever you are, <laughs> and imagine half a meter above that. He cleared that. Wow. <laughs> That's how high it is. It is very, very high indeed. Especially with the, the angle that they take that, that jump, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the very famous Fosbury flop, as they call it, named yeah. after the famous athlete Dick Fosbury, who uh, passed away last year, actually, revolutionized. Uh, yeah. If there's one athlete who completely changed the event, yeah. it was Dick Fosbury. Wow. So, t on the track, in case you're interested, we'll have the women's 100 meter dash coming up. Uh, in a little bit. Uh, there are seven finals. It's time finals coming up, so the women's 100 meters will be starting shortly. Yes, and of course some of the at these athletes will be trying to see what times they make because this, uh, this year is a year of, of qualification and you want to qualify to make a team. You know, that's the, the end result of, 
of what athletes actually train for to represent Trinidad and Tobago at the highest level. And of course, the Carifta Games are already in the books, but there's also the yes. under 20s coming up, the yes, World, yes. Under, uh, World, World under Athletics 20s. under 20 event coming up. Yes, there's also the World uh, Relays as well. You know, that should be taking place in uh, Bahamas. And then, of course, the big one. Yes, of course, the big one. The Olympic Games in four. Just to qualify for the Olympics is a huge achievement yes. for any athlete. And uh, certainly the athletes will be looking forward to uh, making the games. Uh, two athletes have qualified already from TNT. Jareem Richards yes. is already in. And uh, the swimmer, Dylan, um, Dylan, Dylan, Car Carter. Dylan Carter, correct right, yes. Yeah, he's uh, already in. Uh, so those two already uh, uh, in the books there for that, Paris. That's excellent news to know that you, you qualified way before, you know. <laughs> yeah, it always takes the pressure off, yeah, but then the pressure off. Uh, th there's uh, still a lot to go, a lot of uh, preparation to go. Yes. A few of the stalwarts of TNT uh, track and field and uh, you know, Olympic movement in general uh, will, will not be competing this time. There'll be no Richard Thompson. No Richard. First time since t 2008, there will yeah. be no Richard Thompson competing. Yeah. And uh, he's one of those uh, athletes who uh, has made his mark in a huge way. Yeah. So we will shift our attention to the 100 meters. In the meantime, the high jump's still going on. And uh, we saw Christian Latouche uh, a little while ago. The official's just uh, getting things right. Uh, let's see what the jump is. And in the meantime, here's the girls 100 meter dash. Oh, really good throw there. So it seems that we have a full field for the women's 100 meter dash. Yeah, it's That's certainly good. Uh, first field. full field for the day. Yeah, it, it is a uh, full field here for the women's 100 meters. And let's run through the field for the first. 100 meter dash. Well, there is, of course, Charisma, Charisma Thomas of Memphis in one, Carisi Elto of Davity in two, Aisha Redman of One A Week in three, Kiwes Gomez, who we saw just a while ago in the women's 100 meter hurdles. She is uh, representing IG Fastlane. She is in four. Tamia George, the unattached runner, in five. Archie, Lichelle Archie of Abilene Wildcats. The old club in uh, six, Sherry's Patterson, the unattached runner in seven, and Colleen Cleghorn of Maximizing Athletic Potential. She is running out of lane number eight. So of course, these athletes will be looking for times under 11 and 10 seconds. Anything under 10, well, probably takes you straight to the Olympics. Yes, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, Good point. And you do have the qualifying times, I believe, somewhere there. Yeah. So we're just getting ready for the start of the first event, women's 100 meter dash. So Thomas in one. Cielto in two, Aisha Redman in three, Gomez in four, George in five, Archie in six, Patterson seven, and Cleghorn in eight. They're ready to their mouths. Just ready for the start. A few more nervous moments to negotiate here for the athletes. Getting ready for the first 100 meter. Well, they've been told to stand up here. Of course, yes. this doesn't help if you're an athlete when uh, some more. Yeah, this, is, this, place. this is where your nerves start to build up. Heart starts pounding. I think it's a bit of a problem here for the starting blocks. Is it for. To me, a George, the unattached runner, is in five. And uh, many of these unattached runners either train with a private coach or at least they train outside of the club structure. So here we go once again. Start of the 
women's 100 meter dash timed finals of course and the overall the fastest overall wins the bet Blistering start there and excellent execution coming out to the end to, act to finish this race. It's an excellent run here by Gomez. 13.09 her time, Cielto 13.42 and Archie in third 14.24. Those are the three fastest. Those are the three fastest. I will keep an eye on that time for Kiwas Gomez. 13.09. Gomez, uh, 13.09. So the second event just about to start. Amir Mondi of Abilene Wildcats in one. Hope Halfer, the, the unattached runner in two. Kayla Melville of IG Fastlane in three. And Huey's Chanel Williams in four. Kanisha Alexis of Concord in five. Janisha Allenby of uh, Memphis in six. Thea George, the unattached runner in seven. And Janessa Rodriguez of Stallion. Well, she is racing in lane number eight. Doesn't appear that uh, we'll have Hope Halford of, uh, of the, the unattached runner. She's not going to be competing in this one. And so, second event here for the women's 100 meter race. Event that uh, Trinidad and Tobago has never won an Olympic medal in, but uh, TNT has received uh, quite a few honors in this event over the years, the 100 meter event. And of course, all of these athletes will be hoping to cover as maximum distance with the first two steps of the, of the race in an effort to keep themselves ahead of the field here. Here we go once again. Mondi in one. Two is empty. Melville three. Williams four. Alexis five. Allen B six. George seven. And Rodriguez eight. And they're off. And there we go with the start of the race. It's an excellent start on the outside by Rodriguez. Lane but four. it is Williams is pulling along here. And Williams is going to take this one quite comfortably. Williams gets across the line. But I think she may have gone very, very close to the 13. A second mark, so we'll see what that time is for Seanel Williams of Yui. And uh, Yui there uh, having Seanel Williams out there, and uh, she's produced the fastest time in this one. It wasn't fast enough uh, to get ahead. Your thoughts on the race? I mean, excellent form. Uh, her, her stride was excellent. Knees up. This is something that a coach will be looking forward to seeing. You want to know that your knees are up and your hands are pumping in the right way. And that's that's what makes her power towards the finish line and pulling away from the field. Actually. Excellent. The kind of sprint that you like to see. It is the fastest <laughs> time. 12.71. Melville. Yeah. Yeah. 13.17. <coughs> She's third fastest overall now. So that was. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that time for you. Shauna Williams, a new leader here. How often you see athletes in the first couple of these time finals go on to win? You yeah. will see the winners coming later on. 12.71, really good. I'm sure a majority of these athletes would be like under 17 and younger women as well. Yeah, they certainly would be. And that's going to be the field for section three. Naomi Pierce of Memphis in two, in one. 
Pro, but uh, it doesn't appear that there is. Uh, Naomi is not going to be racing today. Brianna Pompey of One A Week in Two, Natalia Joseph of Stallion in three, uh, Tanique Vincent of Concord in four, Amaya Ferrer, Fer Ferrier of, uh, of Lions Athletic in five, Adelia Blades of Abilene Wildcats in six, Mariah Second of FAD in, in seven, and Naomi Theodore of Phoenix Athletics uh, in eight, of course. Uh, Tanique Vincent as a name that we will recognize better this yeah. uh, at the Corifta Games. So we expect, we're expecting some fire blazing in this event. <laughs> she, she will of course be the yeah. athlete who will be favored uh, to take this one. Uh, Tanique uh, Vincent, uh, her brother, also would have competed at the Corifta Championships. And it's always full fields when it comes to the 100 meter heats, you know, when it comes to all events, whether regional or international, because it's one of the most popular events in track and field. Certainly is. Uh, they're just getting into their blocks at the moment. So important to get uh, those blocks right. So two athletes, Naomi Pierce and Amaya Ferrer of Lions Athletic, both of them are out of this one. And here we go at the start of the race itself. And immediately it's an even start, but here is Tanique Vincent coming through. She, oh, she has a challenge on her hands here. Mariah Second is starting to fade now, but Tanique Vincent does enough to hold on and take the win ahead of uh, Second. Mariah Second, in fact, finishes in second place. And uh, that was a nice little battle there, but uh, you always felt that Tanique Vincent was uh, in charge of that one. Yeah, because Vincent looked really strong and, and powerful there, you know, holding it down. She didn't have much problem, trouble. And she produces the fastest time at 12.69 is her time. Yeah. Uh, so just ahead of Seanel Williams. She's now pushed Seanel Williams down into second place. So as you would expect, uh, Tanique Vincent has come up with the fastest time uh, so far in the third of the seven finals. Good run from her. Yeah, excellent run. It was what we, was ex we were expecting. Shosha, that she would be at least uh, happy with, uh, pleased with that run. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what's happening in the next event. And uh, the next event, well, this one is a smaller field, just four athletes in this one. Not seeing Michaela Scott of Lions Athletic, she's not going to be competing here. Uh, there is definitely a Yodi Simmons of uh, Memphis, she is out there to compete. Christy Marie Mirage of Burnley uh, in three. Is she there? I don't think she is. There is the Concord athlete, uh, Janae Murray, another familiar name in local, uh, tr local track and field. Janae Murray of uh, Concord, she is com competing. And uh, Genesis Tahila Lewis is in six. Well, she is there, no seven and eight. So Talise McCammon of Memphis and Aisha Williams of uh, MEP, uh, she's not going to be competing here. So no athlete in one, none in lane number three. So Christy Marie Mirage of Burnley is not going to be competing here. So we do have, here's the final field. Simmons in two, Smith in four, Murray in five, and Lewis uh, is in six. This is section four of uh, seven finals. Fastest time so far reminding you 12.69. And there we go. Good start already here for Janae Murray, who's already out to the line. But look at this from Ayodi Simmons. Ayodi Simmons is going for it here. A lead of five meters, and she is absolutely blazing across the line. Oh, boy, I think that, that was going to be the lowest score here today. Yes, yes. That is a very good run there by Ayodi Simmons. And let's see the time. The Memphis runner, 12.39. 12.39, oh. the fastest time of the day by some margin. In fact, she's actually 0.3 hundredths of a second faster yeah. uh, than uh, Tinique Vincent. That was really an excellent run there. She didn't even look like she was running that fast, though. <laughs> the previous athletes looked way faster than that, but 
as you can tell, it, it, she reminds me of Usain Bolt. <laughs> well, that would take some doing. Yeah. And, uh, the great Usain St. Louis Bolt. St. Leo Bolt, correction. Yeah. So let's take a look now at section five. We're getting down there, the last three races. So there is no athlete in one. So no Leticia Campbell of Concord will be competing today. Alexis Sipasad of uh, Phoenix Athletic will be running. I'm not seeing any athlete in three, so that means there will be no Celeste Matias of uh, FAD out there. And uh, there is Hiro Gonzalez of Davity. She is out there in lane number four. Memphis Haley Lynch is right next to her. Akili Kubre of Maximizing athletic potential is in six. Brianna Francis of Lions in seven. And Ariel Richardson of One Week is in eight. And she is definitely competing. And how do you manage your expectations at this time of the race? How, how do you get yourself? Um, that, that of course, is the, the triple jump uh, taking place at this time. Yeah, I mean, at this time, it's crunch time. You already know what you did in, in, in your training, and, and now it's just saving your time to execute. You've been training with your peers. Now you're actually competing, so it's now it's, it's it's really crunch time. Yeah, you don't have much thought, but to execute and know exactly what your coach told you to do. The athletes are heading to their marks. Yeah, it's just those final details uh, that the coaches would have imprinted upon these athletes. That's what's yes. coming into play right now. So Sipasad in two, Gonzalez four, Lynch five, Kudre six, Francis seven, and Richardson eight. And there off. we go with the start, and it is a pretty good start here for Brianna Francis, and uh, she is uh, slight, well she had a slight lead, now she's been overtaken by Haley Lynch of Memphis, and Haley Lynch is getting to the line, maybe not the fastest time of the day, but she gets the win in heat uh, number five here, or section number five, and Haley Lynch of Memphis takes the win. There should be a final today. It would be such an eventful final, right? Uh, 13.17 is the time for Haley Lynch. And uh, not the fastest time so far. That still belongs to Ayodi Simmons of Memphis. 12.39. It's a pretty good time there. Yeah, it's pretty good. But uh, not in the context of uh, today's event. As uh, there are some faster times already recorded here today. Uh, so we go on to section seven. No Imani Mills of Memphis in one. All of the other athletes are out to compete. Kasha Burton of Maximizing Athletic Potential is in two. Khadija Lee of Genesis in three. Kira Balchan of Mountain Eagles in four. Michelle Sturge White of Concord in the five. Kate Crawford unattached in six. And Rochelle. Rollins of Concord in seven, Kanisha Batiste of Burnley in eight. So as we see the men are on the way, heading to the, the, their tents as they await their start. Much anticipated event here today. 100 meters, always anticipated, always exciting. As you can hear the crowd every time you hear the gun go off. Blistering sun here in the city, in the capital of Trinidad and Tobago today. And these are always the conditions for Caribbean athletes, right? Certainly, and uh, they're not used to it. Well, it's going to be pretty <laughs> difficult. It's always difficult to compete in that sort of uh, situation. So here we go with the start of uh, section six. Just to remind you of the field. Burton in two. Lee in three, Balchon in four, Sturge White in five, Crawford in six, Rollins seven, and Batiste eight. And uh, Kate Crawford in that very, very bright green outfit. Easy to spot here. Oh, that was a mistake. Certainly a huge mistake there really by mistake. Kiera Balchon of Mountain Eagles. Yes, there's no forgiveness with that now these days. That's a complete red card if it happens at any other any major event. So let's see what the official would do 
here today. I don't know if you've ever been red carded, but uh, it's not a nice feeling, is it? No, definitely not. I've been training for, for all the months to come from just one event and, and be told that you can't compete. Seems like she's going to be. Yeah, seems like she's going to be getting a red car. And official yeah. is on the way to the field. Yeah, uh, she's stepping over she's and stepping she is over. going to stop on lane number four. And, and there yeah, is the red car. That's it. And Kira Balchan's day that's is over it. here, yep. at least for the 100 yeah. meters. There's no Blyes in the Olympic. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to practice it from now. So that's uh, she very, very disappointingly. You yeah, can see yeah, yeah. it would take 10 Clydesdale horses to drag her off the track at this point. Really disappointed to Kira Balchan. Uh, she departs. So just to remind you of who is still out there Burton in two, Lee in three, Sturge White in five, Crawford in six, Rollins in seven, and Kanisha Batiste, uh, Burnley in eight. Triple jump uh, taking triple place jump. at this time. That uh, would have been uh, Dominic Maxwell of uh, Topo Tapak, I believe, with that uh, jump back on track once again. Section 5, fastest time so far, don't forget, 12.39. Here we go with the start, and uh, it was an iffy start from several of the athletes on the outside, but take a look at Kanisha Batiste here, who has a very good start, and she is holding on to take this one just ahead of Khadija Lee of Genesis, and it looks like uh, Rochelle Moore Rollins of uh, Concord in seven was the one who came across for third, but definitely Kanisha Batiste of Burnley uh, taking the win here. A nice round of applause going up along, and 13.11 uh, the time for Kanisha Batiste. And Lee in 13.31 for second, and 13.42 for uh, Rollins in third. Seems like there's a bit of a tailwind today. That certainly is going to help. Is that Michelle Yee? Yeah. <laughs> saw the red ear, didn't you? <laughs> well, uh, the triple jump uh, is still taking place at the moment. And uh, you can see the jump. Well, the athlete just pulling out there. Just didn't have it uh, in him at uh, that time. That was Dwayne Herbert of Stallion. Just pulling out there, Dwayne Herbert. So it's going back to the field. It is, yeah. Michelle Lee, yeah, in fact, yeah. yeah. She's here to run in this one. Uh, this is a rare treat here for the crowd to see Michelle Lee. Yeah. It seems like Michelle Lee is uh, training at home. Yeah, she's here to train at home. Uh, of course, uh, 2003, and it, what, a, what a huge honor it is for the rest of the athletes here uh, to run against the legend. Definitely, uh, Let's, give you, the, let's give you the full field. Yeah, Tiana Richardson in one, Maisha Tobias in two, Symphony Patrick in three, Michelle Lee Ahi in four, Sierra Joseph in five, Khadija Pickerin are in six, Keona Devonish in seven, and Tiana Hamilton in eight. This is the fastest of the seven of the 100 meter events here and certainly it, it represents the generations doesn't it? Oh definitely some of these athletes would have been growing up hearing about Michelle Yeh and seeing her you know in different events so definitely an honor for some of them. I'm not sure Michelle Yeh would certainly want to achieve a, a, a specific time here yes. uh, to qualify for the Olympics so that's what it's all about for her so Look out for some fireworks here for Michelle Lee Ahi. She is in lane number four. And, and here we go with the start, and Ahi takes uh, control immediately. But Symphony Patrick's trying to stay with her. But look at the burst of speed from Ahi. And gets across the line in just over 11, 11.48 11 is the flash time. Really comfortable to run there for, for Ahi. Uh, she wasn't under a lot of pressure, but um, you know, this time I don't think it's, it's one of the times that she'll be looking at, but we're still in development needs. <coughs> 11 11.47 for Ahi. 
certainly nowhere close to her fastest time yeah. in her career. But it is the fastest time of the day, day, so yeah. an easy win, and an easy winner here for Michelle Liahi, who uh, heads off into the sunset, or should we say the noon, sk noon <laughs> sky, and Michelle there getting the win pretty comfortably. Her fastest time in history, her personal best is of course 10.82, Michelle Liahi, uh, fastest time for any woman in Trinidad and Tobago history, so she is some distance off that. Second fastest, of course, would be Kellyanne Batiste, who would have run 10.84 Claremont uh, some years ago. Michelle, uh, Kellyanne Batiste actually ran that time twice in her storied career. Mr. in time. So a rare treat to see Michelle Lee Ahi run here at the event. And uh, now we're gonna see the start of the boys, 100 meter dash and 12, uh, 12 sections here. So uh, we're in for the long haul here at the moment. Let's give you the field for uh, the first event. Tishon Russell of Concord in one, Naeem Nelson of Simplex in two, Tavon Scott of UTT Patriots in three, Najanu Bellamy of uh, Burnley in four, Nathaniel Lewis of Memphis in five, Judah Taylor of Abilene Wildcats in six, Akini Spencer of Stallion in seven, and Mickey Paul of Daveny in eight. As we head to the field of the long jump, we have Kanisha Shellman. She's going to take the triple jump, sorry. Easy jump there for her. She okay. checks. Another one of the up and coming athletes of Trinidad and Tobago. Another one of the medalists that uh, the Caribbean Games. Coach right there, just exchanging a few words, and she just has an easy way about her, doesn't she? Yeah, a pretty easy way. So there's the first of the sections for the men's 100 meter dash, and 12 of them in all. So we're in for the long haul here. So now he's going to their marks. So here's the field once again Russell in one, Nelson two, Scott three, Bellamy four, Lewis five, Taylor six, Spencer seven and Paul eight. And they're off. Pretty even start, but a poor one there for Lewis, who's really trailing Ooh, behind. That. But that is a powerful run on the outside. And it is Nelson here battling, but it's going to be Spencer. Uh, is that? Judah Taylor, in fact, is the man who's gone there Judah to take Taylor. it. Let's see what, what time he's going to stamp on the field. And Taylor gets it in 11.03. Fastest time so far, 11.03. Yes, 11.03. And second, we have Nelson. In the different sports around uh, locally, I'm sure you'll hear that everywhere. Yeah. But why is this athlete not being selected? We're sticking. X amount of wickets, he's scoring all these goals Definitely. and can't find a way into a national team. But track and field is had it down. It's very, very simple. There's no, yeah. no, no subjectivity to it. <laughs> Individual sport, you know what you have to do, so you know, it's how bad you want it. So we're heading Feet on their two. marks at the moment here. Here's the field. Fox in one, Moses in two, Bob three, Charles four, Griffith five, Austin six, George seven, and Lewis in lane number eight. Full field for this one. And there we go with the start. And it's a good start in the middle of the track by Zacchaeus Charles alongside Nicholas Bob. Bob and Charles, but Charles is out in front. Bob just behind him and finishing fast is Mosiah George. Those three finish in the top three places. Charles first, Bob second, and Mosiah George of Tobago Falcons coming in to get third place. I think definitely that looked uh, an improvement on the first race. Not so. Not Charles 11.4. He seemed to have a, a really rocky start. He's going left and right and he started the race straight up into the first 50 meter mile. 
Second place, you have 11.71 with Bob and George 11.80, and that's third for he two of the men boys 100 meter dash. So here we have uh, section three of uh, the event today. Alejandro, Mem Alejandro Felix of Memphis in one. Lindell Batiste of uh, maximizing athletic potential in two. Rashawn Thompson of Abilene Wildcats, he is in three. And uh, that is, uh, of course, your former club. Yes. And uh, John Lead, the unattached runner, he is in fourth place. Jaron Yeloy of uh, Phoenix Athletic, he is in four. Rice Poisson of uh, Mountain Eagles Mountain is in Eagle. six. Josiah Franklin of Burnley is in seven. And Nathaniel Lee of uh, Alpha in number eight. All right, so another full field here for heat three of 12. So this moment is where the athletes seem to try to get their starts right. Get warm before the event actually begins. And they get a couple seconds to do do this. So the officials just ensuring that all is well for the start of this one and no athlete in lane number one so that's Alejandro Felix of Memphis is oh no there no, he is he's there. He's yeah, yeah he's just taking his time getting yeah. back to his, <laughs> uh, to his blocks here all eyes on him at the moment Alejandro Felix as the man from Memphis gets his place in the line now they call the two their blocks at the moment and here they go and again Felix is last to get his blocks I think he's really super concentrated. Let's see what sort of start he produces here. Felix in one, Batiste two, Thompson three, lead four, Yeloy five, Boisson in six, Franklin seven, and Lee in eight. Wonderful colors of all the different clubs here in this race. Blazing and start on the outside, it is Nathaniel Lee uh, showing early here, but look at the start here from Felix. Felix, yeah, he took his time and he's going to take this one, just easing up a bit as he gets to the line. And that is definitely the first time under uh, 11, 11 seconds, seconds today. Yeah. And that is Felix, so he made us wait and he produced and the goods. he produced the goods, definitely. 10.83, really comfortable run there for him. Oh, that was actually Daryl Brown. It says Brown. Well, it says Brown, but we had <laughs> Alejandro Felix. Yeah, that was actually, I was looking at the athlete and saying, this athlete is just built like Daryl Brown. Oh, he said he did look like him, but... Yeah, that was, uh, correction, okay. that was Daryl Brown. Yeah, <laughs> that was Daryl Brown there. Uh, he's, still, he's still at it. I think he's uh, competing in Masters events right now. Yeah. Yeah, really doing masters. Excellent run there by, by Daryl Brown. 10.83. And looking a little bit different now, I think he has some more. Usually we'd seen him with uh, a full head of hair. Yeah. Uh, but now it's uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit of a uh, plat on the back. Yeah, I think it is. Some, some there. Yeah, he definitely has. Well, great to see him here. And uh, it was listed as, uh, we apologize for that. It was Alejandro Felix that was listed for Memphis, yeah, but. Yeah. Then, of course, the other giveaway would have been no Memphis uniform. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> All black out here. Right, so that's Daryl Brown. And Brown has the fastest time, 10.84. So what a treat we've had yeah, today, Daryl Brown yeah. and, and Michelle Lee. 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 Oh. Really excited to see Daryl Brown still at it, despite all the, the hiccups that he's had as an athlete in Trinidad and Tobago. Silver medalist in the World Championships uh, back in France. And, uh, moment for him his biggest moment biggest moment of his career yeah. he's always a respected athlete here in Trinidad and Tobago so let's see what's happening with uh, section four will there be any surprises here now these are the athletes listed 
Now, I'm not seeing any athlete in one, so that's Teodi Lee. Well, there's no athlete in one, but in two, uh, Teodi Lee of uh, Alpha is there. Sean Bosigard of Abilene Wildcats, uh, he is right next to him in lane number three. Samson Lewis of Memphis is in lane number three. Lane number four, in fact. Enoch Lewis of Mountain Eagles in five. Darius Martin of uh, Phoenix in six. Jaden Percival of QRC in seven. And Adrian Bailey, the unattached runner, in eight. Uh, in fact, we can scratch off the name of Darius Martin. He is not going to be competing in this one. So just six athletes in section four. And there we go with the start. And that's a pretty good start on the outside by Adrian Bailey, the unattached runner. But uh, Enoch Lewis, oh my, look at that run by Enoch Lewis. Gets there quite comfortably in the end. Uh, the flash time is 11.08. And uh, that certainly would be the second fastest of the day, if that stands up, yeah. uh, outside of Darrell Brown, of course, who is the exception and the outlier today. Joseph, 11.08. Lee, 11.36. That's Bailey, actually. And Lee, 11.91 to round off the field. So section four in the books here. So outside of Darrell Brown, who really looked quite easy in yeah. getting uh, really getting easy. across the line there oh. in under 11 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Only when he crossed the line and, 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 and slowed down on his line. Hmm. Well, Who that, is this? That's <laughs> not, that's not <laughs> Mr. Felix. Yeah. <laughs> no disrespect, of course, to Mr. Felix, but I think everybody would love to be uh, of that caliber yeah. of uh, Daryl Brown, uh, the outstanding runner from Trinidad and Tobago. So let's uh, head across back to the track to see what's happening here. And uh, Denzel Williams of Concord in five is in lane number two. Uh, there is an athlete today in the, in this race, at least in lane number one. That's Aaron Dowridge, unattached, unattached. runner. Mm -hmm. Just uh, next to him in uh, Phoenix Athletic, Andre Cornan is in lane number three. And two men in white shirts there. The second one of them is Khalid. Abdullah of the, the unattached runner, he's in four. In five, Mikhail Mohammed of Simplex. And uh, six, Kaya Phillip of MAD. Tariq Gould of the unattached runner in seven. And Zion Sylvester of the young ones. He is on the outside in lane number eight. So many different clubs in Trinidad and Tobago. And it's a really a good sign to see you know, a lot of, of, of youths are involved in track and field and in sports in general. And it's a really, really exciting to see so many athletes. Does the athletes take their mark? So no Khalid Muhammad of uh, the unattached runner. He's not here in this one. So the field that will take and uh, no Zion Sylvester on the outside either. He is from Neon Walls. No Zion Sylvester. So just six in this race. And here we go. There is the start of the race and it's a very good start on the outside in lane one. Aaron Dowridge there is being challenged now by the Concord man, but Simplex is Kale Mohammed gets across the line in the center of the track and he wins it quite comfortably. Flash time is 11.18. 11.18 and he gets there uh, to get the win quite comfortably. Not the fastest time of the day. That still belongs to Daryl Brown. Second fastest would be Judah Taylor and here are the times. Right, we have Muhammad with 11.19, 11.40 for Williams, and Dorridge with 11.56, and that rounds off field one, two, three. And we're heading to section six of 12, the men and boys, because it's a mixture of men and boys competing here, which is really good for some of these athletes to compete with athletes who are a bit faster, you know. Just give you a sense of what you need to do. Yeah, it? it gives you that pull, as they call it, a uh, rabbit. <laughs> the rabbit. Really good development for some of the younger athletes to compete with, with the older guys. Yeah, it certainly is, and uh, I'm sure that they'll relish the opportunity, learn from their mistakes. Also hope that they do take the opportunity to speak to some of the older athletes. Definitely. And, uh, get that that fighter, I mean, the likes of, let's say, Michelle Liahi and, of yeah. course, Daryl Brown, just, of to, course, yeah. just to get a little talk with them and find out 
how they prepare that certainly would have really change your view on a lot of things so we look like we have a full field today again in section 6 of 12 in lane 1 we have our ap ap athlete representing stallions that's DeAndre John in lane 2 of Faisabal Athletics we have Amali Garcia in lane 3 of Alpha we have Darwin Sandy in lane 4 of Davide we have Jeremy Nanton in lane 5 of OAW we have Allen Rondon Abling Wildcats in lane 6 Kishon Banfield in lane 7 Simplex Athlete Raheem McCollum and in lane 8, the athlete from Burnley, Isaiah Mahamud. Uh, there's no athlete in lane 7, that's uh, Raheem from Simplex. Calman is out for this one, so here we go. The flag's fluttering just behind uh, the athletes. Oh, uh, false start. Uh, start. And that's going to be the end of the day for DeAndre John, the stallion, stallion. man. Well, Ooh. that stallion was just a bit too frisky at the start there. And DeAndre John's uh, evening is going to be over pretty soon. Uh, that is uh, mm, mm, mm. really unfortunate there for DeAndre. I, I, I can't imagine what, what's going through your head when you uh, you fall start knowing that that's it. You don't have a, you don't have another chance. Yeah, and it does happen. There's a red card about yeah. to be brandished mm. in front of him, and that's going to be that's the end. There. He turns, oh, his yeah. head falls, and he walks away disconsolately. Oh, here. it's actually two athletes oh, yeah. walking away. We didn't get to see uh, Amani. I yeah, didn't Amali see Garcia his uh, false uh, start as well. Amali Garcia of Faisabad also moving out. So uh, that leaves Sandy in three, Nanton in four, Rondon five, Banfield six, and Mahabir in eight. So we're looking at Sandy for this event, an uh, athlete who has been on it for uh, quite a long time. And, and there's the start, and it's a good start here for the Simplex uh, four yeah, in lane number six. And Sandy starts well, but on the outside, look at Darwin Sandy. But he was warming up earlier, and boy, does it uh, pay for him here. And Sandy strides across the line. A nice, easy run for him easy run. Uh, to get the win. Here, bouncing uh, in the wind yeah, as he yeah. runs across. Yeah. And uh, Sandy, you called it there. Sandy. Uh, the big name in the field, and he gets there to make the, get the win in 11.28 11 seconds. Uh, another time that Sandy will be looking forward to 11.70 there for Nanton, and we have Mahabir in 11.79 to round off the field. So we go swiftly across to the next race, which is uh, lane, which is number seven. And uh, Michael Rodney of MAP in one, Moses Flanders of Faisabad in two. In uh, lane number three, we have uh, the FAD athlete, Malcolm Douglas. Uh, Phoenix Athletic, they have Jaden D'Souza. Uh, he is in lane number four. Uh, Jafari Farrell of Simplex is in five. Two men with the white shirts just across the middle. Kyle Grew, well, here's a name that uh, we haven't name. heard for a while, a big, yeah, name, yeah. a big name, Kyle Grew attempting to qualify for his, I believe this would be his third straight Olympics, Kyle Grew of Abilene Wildcats, that's a beautiful one though, it's confirmed that is in fact Kyle Grew, it does in fact look like yes, a body structure, and then uh, UGT Patriots, Matthew Graham, Dylan Bernard of TNT Defense Force, this race. We're really getting a treat here today. <laughs> really, really, really development week here for these athletes as it is Olympic year. So these athletes are trying and uh, getting ready to secure their spots. You know, Kyle Guru is a, a, usually a 200 meter athlete, so it'll be exciting to see what he what he produces here in the 100 meter. Yes, uh, certainly. 2016 and 2020, Kyle Guru competing at the Olympics. So, Fine runners in this field, and usually he has a curve to contend with. There's no such yeah. curve here today for him. <laughs> Straight ahead. And this, of course, will be part of uh, his, uh, in terms of him developing, uh, at least working on his speed here. An athlete who blossomed a bit late in his career, Kyle yes, Definitely. And 
he is in lane number six. So let's give you the field lane assignments again. Rodney one, Flanders two, Douglas three, D'Souza four, Farrell five, Drew six, Graham seven, Bernardi. Can anyone go with him here? This is a big chance here for some of these athletes to make a name for themselves Completely. against uh, Carl Grew. And there is the start. It's not a good start for Grew here. And he has some work to do because uh, D'Souza is gone and Grew has pulled up. And D'Souza is going to take this one comfortably for disappointment here for the crowd and for Carl Grew as he pulls up with an injury halfway he, he, through the race. So disappointing. But uh, look at the time on the field. It's 10.50 there ten point five zero well, that's, time. that's our fastest time for the day and that is the athlete the so ten point five zero for Jaden the Souza Phoenix Phoenix man has the fastest time even faster than Daryl Brown's ten point eight four but to be fair Darrell Brown was really Ten, just eight, easing up. For Graham. And uh, Graham also there. That's a pretty good time there for yeah. Graham. 10.92 and 10.97. Three athletes under 11 seconds in this race. Fastest yeah. of the races so far. Yeah, D'Souza. Excellent run there by D'Souza. Almost couldn't tell that it was going to be a 10.50 because of the destruction of, uh, of Kaya Guru pulling up. It's really unfortunate, especially it looked like a, a slight hamstring pull there for him. Yeah, it certainly did. A big disappointment for him. And for him coming so late in the year, yeah. let's hope it's not serious. It's something that he can overcome quickly. But uh, for his chances of perhaps getting to the Olympic Games, that uh, is going to be a, a, a real disappointing thing for him. I can tell you for sure, if it was serious, he would, not, he would have been on the ground still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, said like a man who's yeah. been there on the track yeah, before. Been there, done that. <laughs> Felt that. <laughs> that was the latest of the jumps uh, that we would have seen there. That was, uh, in fact, uh, Dominic Maxwell, once again, the tallest of the athletes involved in the race. Smaller field here for Section 8, this one. Uh, there is no athlete in two, so Elijah Heinemann is not competing. Daniel Alexis of Point Fortin New Jets is in four. Simplex Anton Griffith in four. Trevon Stewart of Burnley in five. Uh, Tristan Caesar of One A Week in six. And Benedict Russell of Cougars in the green of Cougars. He is in seven. So smallest of the fields for the 100 meters here. Alexis in three, Griffith four, Stewart five, Caesar six, and Russell seven. And Small off. field, big action here on the outside. It's Daniel Alexis who has taken the lead, and he is getting a big challenge here from Trevon Stewart, but just holds off Stewart, who just had the feeling at the last minute that he wasn't going to get close enough to Alexis, and Alexis takes a 10.68. That one coming up quite fast. 10.68 is the time, not the fastest of the day, but it is the second fastest uh, for Alexis 6. of 0.14 New Jets. 10.76 for Griffith and 10.93, no, 10.93 for Griffith and 10.76 for Stewart. So they're getting faster and faster as we go along yeah, here. They are. <laughs> and there's some applause there for the Burnley athlete, uh, Trevon Stewart, turning around and acknowledging the applause of his clubmates. Certainly one of the smaller of the meets here. The, this is 2024 Track and Field Series number three. And you would expect that with uh, just a couple weeks outside of the Charybda Games. Uh, let's uh, move across to the Section 9 here. And uh, Section 9, let's see, we have uh, no athlete in one. So no Nathaniel Franklin of Lions. Tyrell Dimsoy of Pfizerbad, he is in two. And point four to New Jets, Josiah Semper is in lane number three. And I am seeing Cameron Powell of Phoenix Athletic in the white and red of Phoenix Athletic. He is in four. Caden Andrews of Memphis in five. Rondell Hall of the, the Masters Runners out there. Uh, Rashad Riley of Abilene Wildcats in seven. And Daniel Proverbs of Stallion in eight. All right, definitely. 
So we saw some really good times uh, after we saw Daryl Brown's 10 e 3 We had some really good times afterwards. We had uh, one of the really good time was 10.50. That was by Jaden D'Souza. That would be the time to beat for today's the bus far. Right, so let's see if we have any athletes in this field that's going to take it. So the, the Masters athlete, uh, Rondell Paul, is one of them who uh, will be hoping that he can show the young men yeah, how it's done. How it's yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> can he do that here today? He's in lane number six. So the lane assignments, Dimsoy 2, Semper 3, Powell 4, Andrews 5, Paul 6, Riley 7, and Proverbs in 8. And they're off. And the start of the race, and it is the man coming through the middle there, the Phoenix man, Cameron Powell, who has already gone out to the front, and he's showing a clean pair of heels here as he strides to the line three meters ahead of everyone else. The flash time is 11.22, not the fastest race here, but a good win for Cameron Powell, certainly showing us a good, clean pair of heels to win that one. Yeah, definitely. Cameron looks like under 17, I think. 11.23 official. So that's uh, his time and uh, all of the remaining times. It looks uh, Cameron Powell 11.23 and Paul 11.59. He uh, really got going a bit late. Dimsoy third 11.61. So the Masters man uh, was able to prove a bit of a point there. Yes, definitely. Right. Head on to section 10 of 12 on the field again with no athlete in lane one. So that would be Dylan Gomez of Burnley. He's not on the field today. And uh, no athlete in lane seven. That's Kelvin Kujo of Memphis Pioneer. So the field today would be Timothy Hamilton in lane three of IG Fast Lane. In lane four, Tariq Vincent of Concord. In lane five, we have Cindy Gibbs of MAP. In lane six, we have Jeremy Fullerton of FAD. And in lane eight, we have Kashawn Ryan of OAW. The officials seem to be ready. So as I mentioned there, it's uh, no athlete in one, so we go with. So we have Dylan Gomez. Uh, he's in two. Uh, Gomez two, Hamilton three, Vincent four, Gibbs five, Fullerton six, and Ryan eight. Uh, Vincent, of course, uh, meddling at uh, the Corrector Games a couple weeks ago, and he's back out here. Great to see the athletes out and uh, putting out the work, of course. Uh, Taparai Waldron is also going to compete in the 3000 later on today. Certainly we'll be looking forward. Last time we saw him, he was magnificent. Uh, Here's the start here, and it's a good start for Hamilton. Hamilton in the running here, but he has been challenged by Sidney Gibbs. Gibbs striding along. Look at those high knees as he is going to get to the line first. Tariq Vincent in second, and uh, Timothy Hamilton of IG Fastlane looks like he has taken uh, third place here. But no doubt about that run from Sidney Gibbs. Uh, the maximizing athletics uh, potential man getting the win in 11.45 seconds. 11.45 for Gibbs, Vincent in second with 11.68, and Hamilton with 11.77 for third. So we're up there where the air is rare. The fastest time so far, Daryl Brown, well, second fastest, Daryl Brown's 10.84. No, but actually the fastest not. Actually not. The second fastest time we have is uh, Denoyan Alexis with 10.68. Correction, yes. Oh, yes. And Daryl Brown actually has been pushed down to third now. Jaden D'Souza is the fastest with 10.50. And uh, let's look at the field for uh, number, section number 11. Joshua Raymond of Stallion listed to compete in two. Maurice Mansing of Abilene Wildcats. <laughs> Uh, he is in lane number three. Akko Hislop. Now, here's a name we haven't heard for a while. Akko Hislop. Kaizen Panthers in four. And Adele Coltrust, the former. Oh, wow. I haven't seen him for a while. Adele no, Coltrust. Yep. <laughs> uh, he is in for lane number five, the Abilene Wildcats man. A lot of athletes are back on it. 
And uh, of course, we're getting to that season now. Where everyone wants to yeah. clinch places on the national teams. Keon Benjamin, <laughs> yes, another big name yeah. uh, from Memphis. Meshach Charles of Burnley in seven, and Kyle Allen of Neon Wolves. Of course, uh, Adil Coltra sprung to national attention when he won the gold medal at the Commonwealth Youth Games in the Bahamas yep, yep. back in 2017. Actually, I was interview I interviewed him after the race. Yep. Uh, that was a big, big moment. You could have seen the smile on his face. Wow. So here we are. Coltrus is in five. So Raymond two, Mansik three, Hislop four, Coltrus five, Benjamin six, Charles seven, and Allen eight. And here we go. And there are the start of the race, and it is already a good start here. Akko, Coltrus, and Benjamin are involved in a big battle here. Wow, that's a good run. And just getting ahead of him, Akko. Uh, Hislop, Coltrus looked in good shape also. Yeah. He got there in second place, but that was the best of the battles we've seen so far. 10.87 there for Hislop. 10.87 for Akko Hislop and Anil Coltrus 10.93 just behind him. So we're seeing a lot of the athletes coming back up and that's excellent yeah. uh, to have them out here. Uh, good to see Coltrus out after, it's been a while since yeah, I've seen him been run. A while. You know, it's a lot of ups and downs with track and field. A lot of athletes want to give up and then they come back and they give up and they come, come back, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot it goes into competing at a high level. Yeah, of course, uh, personal tragedies uh, would have uh, been part of that also. Definitely. Uh, with uh, some of these uh, young men, always difficult. We've seen examples of it through all the different sports personal tragedies having a huge impact on these athletes. Yes. But so I must it's the say final it. section of the 100 meter events for today. Kadeem Herbert of Memphis is racing out of lane number two. Jeremiah St. John unattached in three. Shillan King, the unattached runner in four. Josiah Peters of Burnley in five. Kyle Grant of Concord in six. There is no Israel Debutai of maximizing athletic potential. He's not racing today. And Elijah Joseph of Mountain Eagles. He is in lane number eight. So those are the athletes uh, for this one. A couple of unattached uh, athletes in this one, St. John and King. So the last one, and remember the fastest time, the time to beat so far is 10.50. Jaden D'Souza has that fastest time. Second, Daniel Alexis of Point Fortin New Jets. And third, Daryl Brown running Masters now. He certainly will be a handful, I'm sure, in those yeah. Masters events. <laughs> He definitely will be. He will be a handful indeed. And he yeah. will be a star attraction, I can tell you. Yeah. Uh, any race that he runs in, the former World Athletics uh, silver medalist. Here is the last of the 100 meter races here. And that is a good start on the outside. Caden Herbert is the one who's taken to the front. But Elijah Joseph is challenging for it. Joseph gets there. He will win it. 10.70 of Concord in second, but not fast enough here from Elijah Joseph to get the win, uh, to, to win the event overall. 10.70, it is the third fastest race, uh, the first okay. third fastest time that we've had. Fernandez 10.88, and Herbert third in 11.04. So Joseph 10.70, but the fastest time in the event today belongs to Jaden D'Souza of Phoenix Athletic 10.50. Yes. Thoughts on the 100 meter races? Uh, excellent races. Uh, I didn't expect to see so many athletes today, but I'm really excited to see that. You know, a lot of athletes competing, and sport is alive and well in Trinidad and Tobago. 10.50, uh, excellent time there for Jaden. It was uh, really exciting to see Daryl Brown. What a surprise. Um, Kyle Guru, really unfortunate for him uh, pulling a, sli a slight, slight muscle injury there for him. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm really excited to see so many athletes uh, on the field and competing.
So we do have the 1500 meters coming up next year, and uh, thanks so much for joining us here on Wave TV. And uh, Wave TV, of course, uh, bringing you the track and field action in 2024, and we hope beyond. Been your uncle alongside Javon Brown here for this one. We do have the 1500 meter event coming up, and uh, just three in the women's 1500. And uh, Samantha Shukla, uh, the unattached runner, she's going to be running, of course, Samantha Shukla, a well known name. Uh, in local uh, running here, especially road running. Sarah Rogers is also out there, and Denora George, uh, those three runners involved. The men's field is a little bit larger, the 1500, and of course the biggest name in that 1500 meter event is one Nicholas Romani Esquire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's gonna be fun to see him run. Definitely. And uh, Nicholas Romani, uh, he is in uh, that 1500 meter event, there's some uh, recognizable names in there. Caden Suratan is another one of the Richard Jones rated racing team. He's been in and around, young developing athletes. Omari George of Daveny, another one of the runners, uh, the names that uh, spring to mind here immediately. So the men's 1500 coming up, but we also have the women's 1500 meter event taking place. And uh, there's also Look at the wonderful view here of the Hazy Crawford Stadium. There's one Woodbrook Place across there. How many apartments do you have there? Hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> That's a good answer. Hundreds. <laughs> Hazy Crawford Stadium, this uh, magnificent uh, stadium here. And uh, the high jump is still continuing at the moment. Just to update you with that, uh, the men's high jump taking place. They're just about ready to start. There is the start of the women's 1500 meter event and three athletes there. And uh, there's Samantha Shukla in the back, just uh, behind Sarah Rogers, Denora George of uh, the Unattached Runner. She is also competing. She's in yellow, but she's been left behind here. Now, this is a difficult race here for Samantha Shukla. Of course, it's three and three quarter laps around the field here. This is gonna be a difficult one for Shukla because she doesn't really have anybody to push her in this race. Yeah, definitely. The, the, this race is, we are away from all the power events and this is all about stamina and strength. And obviously, if you want to have somebody to pull you, you know, in order for you to get back to the time. This is all about pacing yourself and executing as well. Yeah, not, no disrespect, of course, to young Sarah Rogers, who's out there and has just been passed by Samantha Shukla. She's a junior athlete and to compete against one of the elite athletes. Uh, it must be a huge honor for her to see what uh, Shukla has done. Uh, she's won a handful, a, a huge handful of races over the last, and uh, she will be defending, of course, uh, Eastern Credit Union crown, uh, I believe, uh, later on this year, uh, in about a month's time. So she's left Rogers behind by about 20 meters and just taking a look at her clock and that's exactly what she has to do here just to get those markers in and make sure she sticks to her plan yes definitely she has she approaches a, a 200 meter mark here she seems really comfortable and, um, the athlete that's fading away second place athlete that is uh, roger rogers of the well cats fading away and this is something you have to <laughs> you have to train for to, to not fade away. Yeah, definitely, and uh, George has just passed uh, the starting point of the race, so she's now passed uh, 400 meters into her race, and Shukla's already more than half the track around. But uh, that's what happens when you come up against one of the elite athletes in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, very good career, uh, Samantha Shukla, at uh, the college level also. And she is going past the line so for the second time 216 on the clock as she goes past and she already has a huge lead it's not about winning this race it's about achieving the times at this point for her most important setting up towards the starting line for the second time here samantha shukla and there she goes as she gets past there rogers now easing up towards the line in the meantime we go back to the high jump which is taking place at uh, this time. Uh, this is the women's high jump. Just two athletes competing, Kanisha Shelbourne and Tanique Vincent. But even though it's just two athletes, what a battle that is. <laughs> two of the <laughs> medal winners from Karipta going head to head here. There's Samantha Shukla though at the moment here. 
going past uh, the 200 meter mark and she's looking quite comfortable and she's coming round and she will lap Denora George in this lap I'm sure here and she will be taking the bell here as she gets along yeah, one thing she's doing she's keeping up here she's keeping that momentum that she started with that was the jump there by uh, Tanique Vincent uh, the Concord athlete getting across there if anything, maybe he's just slowing down a little bit. And this is where she has to keep her discipline. She comes to take the bell here. And she gets across the line 338. So just about a minute and 20 seconds for that lap. I'm not sure if she's going to be uh, too pleased with that. It is very, very hot out there. And, uh, depending on what her plans are, uh, she might be using this race as a build-up to some of the longer races. She does race... Uh, the 5k and the 10k at times. So this is a piece of cake for her, but this is also an event that, that requires some speed. Might be what she's working on at the moment here. And uh, show what she is coming up on the back of Denora George uh, in uh, the orange. You might see her. There's uh, Shelbourne, Benicia Shelbourne of OAS Athletics. It's a legal jump for her. Just touched her. The bar she went over, but it stays still, still quivering as it goes by. There's Samantha Shukla going past Denora George, and uh, Shukla now turning, getting into the final turn, and she's coming to take this one. Sarah George, Sarah Rogers, meanwhile, gets the bell for her final lap. And here's Samantha Shukla, and the time is going to be just over five minutes. How happy she will be with that, I'm not sure. But here she is, coming to the line, last 10 meters of the race. And Samantha Shukla gets across the line, just about, just over 5.4, I reckon, and gets there in the end. No hint of a celebration from her. Celebration, no competition, so you know, usually it's a fight to come back home. You know, George. Denora George gets across the line and uh, she will. she's into her final lap here. There's uh, Sarah Rogers in the last 250 meters of uh, her race here. Another one of the younger runners uh, still coming through and uh, she'll of course take this as a big lesson on how she, what she needs to do to improve to be among the likes of uh, Samantha Shukla and company. Definitely. Most importantly is that these athletes did not give up. They're still at it and they want to finish the, the race. Is always commendable. Corrector medalist Tanique Vincent about to compete here at uh, her latest jump in the women's high jump. She is coming into your picture. Uh, uh, just uh, maybe just a, a shade early there, getting to the top of the J and just clipping the bar. She was on her way down, so that would suggest that uh, not quite uh, getting the timing right. Here's Sarah Rogers. Uh, coming into the final turn and she is going to finish her race uh, we had Samantha Shukla just about five minutes and four seconds and Sarah Rogers's time looks like it's going to be in the region of 640 or so that's a nice round of applause as she gets to the line just on the 640 mark as she gets a call. one more athlete to come in that's Denora George in the women's 1500 meter run event that Trinidad and Tobago has uh, really uh, done a lot with at the international level here. The race, of course, has been dominated by the African countries. And uh, just quickening up as she gets to the end here, Denora George uh, has shown a lot of courage to come out here and put in the end. There she is going across the line and uh, finally across the line and just in 7 minutes, 16.8 seconds. <laughs> very commendable of her to run and complete her race. So that's 5.0290 for Supla. 6.39. 1,500 meters, of course. Uh, the event called the Metric Mile, uh, the marquee event in the middle distance uh, races. That, that, that demands a, a huge balance, as you mentioned earlier, of, of aerobic and anaerobic yeah. conditioning. Three and three quarter laps over uh, uh, the 400 meter track. This event has produced some fine names in the history of 
track and field, the Flying Finn. Pavel Nermi was one of those who would have uh, shot to prominence, the Valiant, the Australian. Kip Kano, the Kenyan great, what a runner he was. Certainly he's well remembered. And, uh, of course, one of my favorite athletes in history ran in this race. Uh, the great Moroccan Hisham El Garouj claimed the Olympic, Olympic title back at the Athens Games in 2004. Sure, we should mention, of course, that uh, the current head of World Athletics, back-to-back -back winner of the 1500 meter Olympic title, Seb Cole, the great Seb Cole, these days known as Lord Cole. <laughs> of course, this year we have a lot of loss in traffic with the uh, marathon record been a, it's very, very sad. In fact, we've had a lot of middle distance and long distance runners there. A rash of events happening in the uh, part of the world. So the athletes are uh, aware. They're still competing, of course, in the women's uh, high jump. Two athletes there. And uh, I think we this is going to be a short competition because, of course, six jumps each. We've seen at least four each so far. So I think we're coming up to the end of uh, this particular event with just Kanisha Shelbourne and uh, Tanique Vincent, uh, Concord. There's the men's javelin also taking place. That was uh, not a bad throw indeed. That's just about 50 meters, I reckon. In fact, it's hit the middle of the <laughs> circle. Here's the men's 1500 meter about to start. And all eyes will be on Nicholas Romani who is competing in this one. Romani is the king of these middle distance and long distance running in Trinidad and Tobago. He is definitely the man to beat these days. Romani right now in fourth place here, just biding his time at the moment, just getting himself, just going through the gears at the, at the moment here, Nicholas Romani in fourth. So this is part of the race where, you know, you just start, you relax, you try to keep your momentum, your pace and your stride because you know you have three other laps to go. So Burnley's Darius Harding is in there uh, wearing the white cap. He is in fifth place at the moment. And Romani is rolled up into second place. As easy as you like, there he is. Uh, the undisputed king of local running in the last couple of years. He's been absolutely dominant. Not sure if anybody's beaten him in any of the five yeah. tier races yeah. on road or track in the last couple of years. The boy got stamina. <laughs> certainly does and he has some class with it won three races in Barbados earlier has a look at his watch as he goes past the 400 uh, his first 400 meters and there he is just rolling into the lead now uh, at the back there and I don't think they're gonna see the front of him for the rest of this race of course. especially when you check your time you know if they have to speed up if they have to slow down and this is really a, a, a race of, of tactics strategy yeah, it certainly is. A race that has been dominated by the Kenyans uh, over the years. And, well, we have some uh, challenge here for Romani. That's going to be encouraging for him. And can he go with him? Well, and he's retaking the lead now from Romani. On their second lap. Seems to be taking a pull. Well, he's gone back in front here. He's given uh, Romani a bit of a challenge here. I'm wondering, uh, we haven't, uh, the, the numbers aren't visible. Correct. Uh, that's the, the problem is it's handwritten. Yeah. So unlike Romani's number, which is quite nicely done. Yeah, so those two, uh, the two heads of state are out there at the moment. Uh, the rest of the field is spread widely behind them. It's a little bit of a battle going on for third place. We're right now at the front. Nicholas Romani, Road Trinidad Tobago Road Racing Club, has a little bit of a fight on his hands here as he's coming up for for the second time, the third time correction, as he's going past. And as he returns to favor, one good turn deserves another. Exactly. And Romani <laughs> takes the bell as he goes into the lead here for the final lap. Can the youngster mount a challenge here? 
Well, he's quickening up again here. He's going after him. This is going to be a nice little battle. Exciting. This is what we like to see. <laughs> Romani, you feel, has something in the tank remaining here. I'm sure he'll be relishing this opportunity. Oh, the youngster's coming for him again. It's going to be one, two. It's a serious battle, but Romani is pulling away. He's just sensing him, and he's pulling away. He has the endurance. He has the strength. He has the speed. Well, he's, he's left him behind. It was a nice challenge from the youngster, but I don't think that for a third time he has okay. enough here. <laughs> and Romani's starting to lengthen his strides. Pulling away Next like round. Oh, my. Look at this. Nicholas Romani turning on the jets and flying towards the line. He's going to take it. But it was a, gr a really great, brave attempt there by the youngster, uh, letting them go. And Nicholas Romani is going to get to the line and uh, just over the four-minute marker. I think he, was, he wanted to get in there just under. The youngster gets in in just about four, just under four minutes and ten seconds. That's a nice challenge he put on. Now here's the battle for third place. And uh, Burnley's uh, Darius Harding's coming for it. He could take third, he does. Harding takes third. <coughs> Just about two more athletes as we await the times of the, this event. Yeah, a couple of the athletes are still coming in. Uh, Jail Marshall, I believe this is. Uh, the last athlete uh, just coming across the line here uh, to finish off the race. So that's going to be the end of the men's 1500. So a uh, one-sided race with uh, Samantha Shukla and the women's 1500, but a more enterprising race in that men's 1500. Oh, definitely. What an exciting race. You know, it's, it's good to see another athlete challenging a top athlete, you know, bringing him to, 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 to his edge, you know, because at the end of the day, you don't know who's going to even though you know it's going to win. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love your way you put that. <laughs> so the women's 1500 meters is in the books. The men's 1500 meters in the books also. Uh, the high jump uh, has been completed. So that's the end of competition there between Kanisha Shelbourne and Shanique Vincent. The men's javelin throw is going on at the moment and uh, they're going to get a good look at uh, uh, that's the Belmont area in uh, East Port of Spain. For quite, citizens quite back. There. <laughs> yeah. Here at Wave TV, we have the best. Uh, the actually, uh, that uh, was at the opening of that building. I remember that's the first time I had the pleasure of meeting the former Prime Minister Patrick Manning at the top there. Nice little conversation with him. It was a really nice moment for me. What a gentleman he was. <laughs> yeah, it's Belmont area and certainly an area that has produced quite a lot of sportsmen and uh, quite a few of West Indies uh, players have come out of the yeah. Belmont area. And uh, certainly... Now, who's the most recent? Oh, that would have been uh, the Davis brothers, I believe, with the last uh, set, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Charlie and, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the two Davis brothers who would have gone on to play for the West Indies. They would have come up, uh, been born in that area, wow. at least according to the records I've seen. And uh, N3A's track and field series number three. Jehu, of course, would have attended Queen's what Royal College what just across uh, the, <laughs> the Savannah. Yes, just across the Savannah. <laughs> and, and just on cue, Jehu has walked in, so he can confirm. Belmont. Belmont. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. And there, there we have a nice shot of Belmont. And Jehu <laughs> has just walked past us here. And he might be able to point out where he's from exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have a saying in Trinidad, you live long when people talk about you Definitely. when you show up. So, <laughs> and 
Olympic athletes live a lot longer than most people. Yeah, I think there was a study yeah. done showing that Olympic athletes, on average, yeah. live five years longer than most other people. Wow, well, I have to get that to get with the program. To get with the program, <laughs> that's right. So the yeah. men's javelin throw still going on at the moment. And what's happening after that? So the pages are turning quite rapidly here in this 2024 track and field series number three uh, this meet. So uh, there will be the women's 400 meter dash, uh, which will be starting shortly. And uh, out of your picture way to the left, we're seeing the women already coming onto the track uh, for that. So that's uh, gonna happen shortly. There will be three women's 400 meter dash races, three sections. Uh, the men's long jump will happen also. And then uh, the men's 400 meter dash, there will be seven uh, races there. Seven sections involved in that one. And let me tell you, this is the event that I grew to hate because this is the event that I specialized in at uh, Abilene Wildcats there with Coach Charlie Joseph. And let me tell you, speed, it's uh, lactic acid, <laughs> a lot of crazy memories there. Chaplin continuing here, the latest uh, throw, that's his offering. Paul throw, as you can see the red flag is up there, I think it would have been, uh, I think he would have stepped on the line. Or was that outside? Uh, might be stepping on the line. The young ladies are now crossing the field, heading to their starting blocks. Seems to be a full field for the women 400 meter dash, section one of three finals. And uh, included in that field, Laquisha Robley, one of the names we've seen throughout these meets for the year so far, another one competing for places in national teams. She is uh, going to be competing in the first race. Jada Jones of Cougars also there. And Milana Patrick of Cougars, two of the uh, three pretty good Cougars athletes involved in this one. Tisha Russell, Jada Jones, and Milana Patrick. Three of them uh, will be racing in these races, 400 meter events here today. So it seems like we have 20 athletes competing for the women 400 meter dash. A lot less than, than what we see with the 100 meter, right? <laughs> yeah, certainly. I guess the harder it gets, the, harder it gets. <laughs> the least uh, number of people come out for it. The harder they fall. <laughs> and a 400 meter uh, huge tradition here in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, outside of the three medals won by weightlifters in Olympic history, 400 meters. Uh, that's where many of the medals have come for TNT. Definitely. Uh, in, uh, in the, over the years. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of a trivia question for you here. Who would be the first uh, for the listeners? We'll give you the answer in a few moments. Uh, who were the first 400 meter runners to race for Trinidad and Tobago at the Olympics? I think they, they will get this one quite, yeah. quite easily. <laughs> I'll give you a hint it was in Tokyo. It Not two 2020, though. Not 2020. Uh, just to run through the field for the first of the women's events. And this one looks like it has been uh, Akisha Jacobs of Concord in one, Tiara Simmons of Burnley in two, Jalisa Hamilton of The Unattached in three, Akila Sayers of uh, Memphis in four, Akisha Robley of IG Fastlane in five, uh, Faith Sylvan of UE is in six, Tisha Russell of Cougars in seven, and Victoria Ned of Lions Athletic, uh, she is in eight. So I don't see any athletes in eight, so I think we might uh, have to scratch off the name of Victoria Ned here. She's not gonna be competing. 
And uh, it doesn't seem as though Akisha Jacob of Concord is, all, is in this race also. So I think he, she's also out of this one. So I'm seeing Tiara Simmons of Burnley in two. Uh, Jaleesa Hamilton, the unattached runner in the white t-shirt. Uh, she is there in lane number three. Kayla Sayers of Memphis is in the white and blue of Memphis. And in the black of IG Fastlane, Laquisha Robley. She would be, of course, the biggest name in this one. UE's Faith uh, Sylvan of UE, uh, she is in six. And uh, Tisha Russell of Cougars is in lane number seven. Oh, there we have uh, Akisha Jacobs. There she is. She's now on. She is now on. In the meantime, the javelin taking place. And there we have the, yeah, there's the field for the 400 meters. And uh, there is Akisha Jacob just in front of her, Ch Tiara Simmons. Chalisa Hamilton's in, in three. She has her hands behind her back at the moment. Keita Sayers in four. Sylvan Faith, Laquisha Rodley in five. And then Faith Sylvan and Tisha Russell of UE and Cougars respectively just uh, ensuring that everyone's there they're heading towards their blocks at the moment here women's 400 meter dash first of three sections in this race and there's the start of the 400 meter event here and a fairly even start as we go along. If anything, Akisha Jacob of Concord is back, but uh, it is uh, Laquisha Robley who's taken control and she's already gone past on the back stretch. And they're onto the back stretch and she's taken a really good, good stride there. And this is the, the, the part of the race where you want to hold the momentum from your start. As they head to the 200 meter mark, we have, this is, not, this is uh, Jaleesa Hamilton who's running unattached and she's heading to the 150 meter mark. It is a pretty good lead that she has here. Trailing is uh, Tisha Russell and Faith Sylvan, but it is Lucretia Robley that's coming to the line here and with uh, the dreadlocks trailing behind her and the multicolored adornments on her arm just fading away a little bit as she comes. She's starting to slow down, but she has enough in the tank to get it in just under a minute. And just on the outside of her, Akila Sayers of Memphis, uh, she gets there in second place. But no doubt about the winner. She did tie up at the end there. There she is. And uh, that is a multicolored delight in terms of her outfit. But a good win for Lucretia Robley. Yeah, that's, a, that's a lactic acid buildup I told you about. It really catches you as you, as you come into the last 150 meter mark. Because you're trying to put on an additional speed to take yourself home. Let's take a look at the times here to find out uh, what Lucretia Robley. I did get the feeling that she came in just under the one minute mark. Not sure how happy she will be with that. And in the meantime, the uh, long jump uh, taking place just in front of us here. Actually, they're still preparing themselves for it. As you can see, very carefully marking off uh, the run up. And the time for Robley 59.92. 59.92. And that's the fastest time so far. Definitely got the feeling that she was coming in under that one minute mark. Definitely. We have one minute, one second, a second. So the second uh, race in the women's 400 meter just about to start. And uh, we have well, we have no athlete in one, two, three, or four. In five, there is one a week uh, in the black of one a week. Ayola Alfred, uh, Memphis, Amia Chapman of Memphis in six. Titans runner out there also. That is uh, Zaya Bruce, and in the yellow and the yellow, predominantly yellow of um, of Abilene Wildcats. Maya Mitchell is in lane number eight. So just the four athletes, and I think the problem here is with uh, the starting blocks there of Amia Chapman of Memphis. Yeah, she's just getting that right. May have been just a bit too close to the line to be comfortable 
uh, for the starters. So just the four in this one. Chapman, Alfred in five, Chapman six, Bruce seven, and Mitchell eight. Well, there's the start here, and it's a good start for Amaya Mitchell. The Abilene Wildcats runner has already gotten a bit of a lead here on Zaya Bruce. Chapman is trying to catch up, and Alfred is trailing at the moment. With Amaya, there's nobody to look to. She's in lane eight, and she's really holding her ground. All the athletes are, seem to be in the exact position that they started in. Uh, right now, we have the athlete uh, Ayola Alfred making a stagger on Chapman as they head to the 150 meter mark. And Mitchell has the lead coming into the turn, about five meters on Bruce. And it is Alfred who has taken up the third place, but she has a lot of work to do still to hold on to third year. But a battle is developing here between Mitchell and Bruce as Mitchell starts to tie up and Bruce has swept past. Bruce goes past, Mitchell has little remaining, and Bruce is gonna take this one just over a minute on the clock. As you can hear the excitement of the crowd as the, the 400 meter is always an exciting event because you have so much more than 100 meter to look forward to, you know? That's a little bit one minute. 0, 0. 0.64 seconds, that's the time for Bruce. So that would be, I would make that the second fastest time, or if not the third fastest so far. Still, Laquisha Robley of IG Fastlane has the fastest time of the day so far. So that's uh, immediately. 51, 51 minutes, uh, 0, 0. 0.64 and 59.92 as you mentioned there for Lucretia Robley. So this, uh, we have the field for the last of the 400 meter races for the women. And uh, Kadish Keisha Adams of Memphis is in lane number two. Uh, in lane number three is Diamond Paul of Point Fortin New Jets. Uh, Tamika Clement of Genesis is in four. We have uh, Milana Patrick of Cougars in five, in six, Abilene Wildcats. They've uh, put in Kimora Young to compete in this one. She is in lane number six. IG Fastlane, Janaya Tobias is in lane number seven. And in lane number eight, the Tobago Falcons runner, uh, Chanel Chanel Green is out there. Last of the 400 meter races. The time to beat is 59.90. And there's the start of the race. And an even start here, but if anything, it is the point fourteen New Jets runner, Diamond Paul, that has the bead on the race so far, and she is moving up well in lane number three. Paul is really taking a start as she, she approaches each and every athlete she's gonna be passing. As she approaches the 200 meter mark, we also see the athlete Paul is actually extending her lead as she approaches the 150 mark and she is holding on to it while we have Tobias as well. In all are the two athletes heading in to the 100 meter mark. And it is uh, Tobias that uh, is now fallen. She's now fallen behind Diamond Paul. And Diamond Paul has opened up a lead here, but Tobias is starting to come back into it. Tobias trying to find a second gear, but look at Paul. She's gonna take this one, just tying up at the end with both the lactic acid, as you mentioned, trying to, just pulling in there. And uh, Diamond Paul getting across the line just over the one minute mark. And it was Tobias that finished in second place. I don't think they were fast enough there to unseat the fastest time by Laquisha Robley. Let's see what the time is. Uh, certainly a competitive race there. No, most definitely. And a nice battle developing there between Tobias and Paul. Paul eventually uh, getting the win, but uh, still waiting for the time. And there it is, 59.57. 59.57 and Paul produces the fastest time of the day since she has taken the win in the women's 400 meter dash. Congratulations to her. And that was uh, a good win, a gritty win in the end uh, to get uh, that across the line first.
definitely. And taking a second place would be uh, Janaya Tobias of IG Fast Lane with one minute uh, 56 seconds there. Very exciting race. As you could see, the entire crowd was uh, cheering these athletes. Really exciting race game. So we're moving along swiftly here. We're almost uh, halfway through the program already. And it's just about 1 o'clock. This uh, finals, uh, the last event is due, is carded for 3 o'clock. So it's not one of the longer events uh, in the, the 2024 Track and Field Series, put on by the National Association of Athletic Administration, the N3As. I don't know how many people would remember. There was a different meaning to the N3As at one time. And uh, uh, it was called the entry is now, of course, it's entry is TT. Mm. Yeah, so there there have been some name changes over the years, but all organizations that happens at some point. Uh, I, gu I guess in cricket, it would, it would have been the Trinidad Tobago Cricket Board of Control. Mm. And they dropped the control yeah. and uh, didn't drop the control. <laughs> <laughs> and so the boys for Jamita Dash uh, will be happening in just a little bit. and. Uh, also, the men's long jump, uh, uh, this, the athletes just below us are still warming up for that. And uh, there you see the board, um, the Oaktronics Galaxy board out there on screen at the moment, taking its 15 minutes of fame. I must say, it's really exciting to see uh, J.U. Gordon giving back as a coach and also as a manager in the entry in CT as he managed the Corrifted uh, team as they're headed across there to Grenada. It's really exciting and uh, exceptional to see athletes actually coming back and giving back to the sport that they once uh, dominated. In. Man of great humility, uh, J. Hugh Gordon. I remember there was a story we had run somewhere around 2008 or 2009 when he'd signed uh, the contract with, uh, I think it was Adidas at that point. Right. And uh, when we saw him we saw uh, Jay Hugh, and uh, I remember the week after he signed that agreement, I saw him on uh, the Belmont taxi stand. Wow. Just yeah. like a, a normal QRC <laughs> boy. Uh, it, it really was. Yeah. I did say a lot about him. Yeah, it's very humbling. Yeah, he certainly is. And nice to see him here with us. And, of course, uh, always great to be around the, the famed track and field reporter, Kwame Lawrence. Always great to see Kwame here. And uh, son with him. Yeah. <laughs> Cycling. Devonte, if I remember correctly, Lawrence. Yes, that's the young man. And uh, certainly sport very much in the family. No Kwame a lot for his uh, coverage of uh, table tennis also. He does dabble with it. Wasn't quite, on, wasn't quite able to convince Devonte to get into table tennis though. <laughs> so the men's 400 meter dash just about to start and uh, as we mentioned seven finals taking seven sections seven in sections. this final yeah. and uh, the men's just making their way across and what attracted you to the 400 meter race or uh, actually, nothing attracted me to the 400 meter race. Very honest. My my coach, <laughs> uh, Charlie Joseph, he was he was that guy, you know. He trains, and that was his specialty. So I just went to that club and I just fell in to do any 400 meter mark. But I really wanted to do the 100, but I, I, quite, I wasn't as fast. So that was my event. <laughs> Yeah, and of course, your coach uh, Charles, or, or Charles Joseph, or rather Charlie as yeah. he's called, would have uh, competed at the 1972, 1976, and 1980 Olympics. Yeah. Uh, wrapped up his career in Moscow, yeah. of all places. Started uh, 1972, which would have been uh, uh, 1972, uh, was that infamous Olympic Games in uh, Munich. Mm -hmm. yeah, that uh, certainly uh, does still ring out. We still remember. Yeah. Uh, the horror of that, those Olympic Games in Munich. And of course, Abilene Wildcats is a team that has a lot of uh, exceptional athletes over the years. And of course, we must say rest in peace to the great Dion Lendor, who was also an Abilene Wildcat athlete and 400 meter runner for Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, certainly it was a huge loss, and yeah. uh, we would have, I'm sure we would have been seeing him 
uh, competing in events this year to Definitely. to compete uh, to qualify for the Olympic Games. You got yeah. Sydney among one of the uh, finest runners to have uh, grace uh, the national uniform. Uh, so we are just about ready to for the start of competition in the men's 400 meter event. And just below us, uh, well, that's the tents that accommodate the runners. And it looks like we're not going to have any runners in one and two. So there's no Dequan Park of Davity. He's not going to be competing. Gershom Adolf of Stallion is in three in the gray of Stallion. Jaden Clement uh, in the neon yellow there. Neon is that green, neon green, neon green. forgive my colors, <laughs> of MAP is in four. Michael Joseph of Abilene Wildcats, I'm not seeing him, he's not out there to compete today. Nathaniel Semper of UTT, uh, he is in six. Roger Mansing of Abilene Wildcats is in seven. And uh, Zachary Frank of Memphis, he is out there in lane number eight. Five athletes involved in this one, second of the men uh, first correction of the men's 400 meter dash and here we go with the start of it and already a good start for zachary frank of memphis but starting to make up ground here is the utt patriots man nathaniel semper and he is on the trail of zachary frank as they go into the back stretch it looks like semper and adolf is on on the back stretch, taking the lead. Semper is taking the lead as he heads to the 200 meter mark. That's the guy in the neon, as you explained. As they head to the 150 meter mark, they extend the lead. Here comes neon. Yeah, coming into the turn now. Uh, this is a fine run here. He's really taking command of this race, and it is. Jaden Clement of maximizing athletic potential. He has a huge lead on the field. And he's going to come in at a time just under 48 seconds. Good run from him. Except, exceptional run there by, by Jaden. I mean, I, I, th I think he'll be excited about that time that he just ran. Clement, 48.17 is his time. Jaden Clement, 48.17. And he has come in there, uh, Adolf, 50.70. He and Semper have the same time, but Adolf uh, finishing in second, and Nathaniel Semper in third place. But that was 48.17. Uh, that's a pretty good start to this one here for uh, Jaden Semper. So that's the time to beat so far. And uh, that's the first of the seven finals. Really good time, as we know that the as we know that the men and boys are all joined in these events. Yeah, they are at uh, this one, so no athlete in one. Always, uh, some feel a huge disadvantage to race out of one in these yeah. uh, events. I mean, you're racing in, in lane number one, you immediately have the turn. I mean, and I mean yeah, immediately. Exactly. It starts turning immediately as you start. Yeah. And uh, it is a huge disadvantage at time uh, for the athlete racing in that uh, in, in that lane. So Roger Rogel Torres of Stallion in two. Kaelin Morris of Abilene Wildcats, he is in three. In four is uh, Shenny St. Hilaire, that's a familiar name from uh, National Running of is in lane number four. In lane five, uh, the QRC man uh, Jaden Percival is there, QRC Athletic Club. Nikhil Lewis of Concord is in six. Armani Kashi of Memphis is not racing, so he is out of lane seven. And Aiden Daniel of Abilene Wildcats, he is in lane number eight. This is section two of the men's 400 meter event. And they're on their marks at the moment. So Torres two, Morris three, St. Hilaire four, Percival five, Lewis six, and Daniel eight. They've been asked to stand up here and I think there's a bit of a problem and I see what it is Armani Kashi was actually in the wrong lane Ooh. he was in yes uh, now I see it here 
Uh, Abilene Wildcats, Aiden Daniel actually is out of the race and Armani Cashi was being told to go back a notch to lane number seven. Let's see if that affects his concentration here as we're just about ready for the start. Section two is underway. And this is an excellent start here from Nikhil Lewis, who's already made up the stride on Armani Kashi. And Nikhil Lewis has taken command here going into the back stretch. And it seems to be Kashi taking over on the back stretch, taking an exceptional lead. And we have uh, the athlete Morris Kayan in lane two, lane three actually, making a push as they head to the 150 meter mark. The athlete there in lane seven, Kashi seems to be extending his lead. And Kashi coming into the turn with a massive lead here. If anything, the threat is coming from Rogel Torres, the stallion man trying to catch up, but he has a huge amount of work to do. Kashi is going to cash in here as he gets the win. And will he go under 48 seconds? I think he did. That could very well be the fastest time we've had in the two races so far. Armani Kashi of Concord of Memphis Correction gets the biggest round of applause in the 400 meters so far and that was a pretty good run he took command after the first 100 meters of the race and he never relented he, he, he was out he was out so let's see what time he has here 48 flat 48 flat that is the fastest time today and that has uh, already gone ahead of Jaden clements 48.17 Kashi in third, 51.90. Uh, Kashi, well, correction, 51. What's the time? I th yeah. think I saw a different time come up there, but uh, the time we were given initially was 48.00 seconds, which looked about right. I think that was a switch there. That athlete was uh, Nikolai Lewis of Concord who, uh, who took that lead. Yes, I think there was, in fact, a bit of a change, unfortunately, yeah. not informed of it in time. So we're actually uh, so if there was an error there, we will apologize for that. So here's the field for section three. Uh, Kyrell Thomas of Cougars in, in lane number one. Malcolm Douglas in two. Jaheem Nelson of uh, Genesis in three. Kamani Rollox of Abilene Wildcats. He is in four. Jerry Simon is in there, the unattached runner in lane number six. And uh, in lane number seven, Jesse Murray of Mountain Eagles. Daniel Gibbs of Concord in seven. And we have uh, the Burnley man, Keitano Fox in, uh, in lane number eight. So a full field for this one. And uh, I think the problem was they were told to stand up and it was Kyrell Thomas running off the field. I think he had to, there was something in his hands there that he had to, he wanted to get rid of. Yeah. Let's hope it wasn't a cell phone. <laughs> All sorts of jokes about kids not being able to get rid of them, but yeah. it wasn't that. Uh, we are being <laughs> unkind to the young Carol Thomas. Let's see if the Cougars man has his wits about him here. We're racing out of the very difficult lane one. Of course, no easier in lane eight, is it? Mm. Surprisingly, the world record was, was made in lane eight. <laughs> Yeah, there we go with the start of section three. An excellent start here for Daniel Gibbs of Concord. He has already blazed past Katana Fox of Burnley. Also going well here is Jesse Murray of Mountain Eagles. Uh, the athlete from Cougars, Thomas in lane one, has really picked up the stagger as he heads to the 200 meter mark. And we have the athlete uh, Gibbs in lane seven pulling the lead as they head to the 150 meter mark. And Gibbs of Concord here has a big lead. We've seen some huge leads here in this contest so far. Jassy Murray trying to catch up with him, but making up the stagger now is Cougars' Kyrell Thomas. And Thomas is forged in front. Thomas is in front, and he is taken over as Gibbs has started to tie up. Gibbs has an injury. Thomas wins it. Gibbs is going to be passed into third place. And that was Jesse Murray getting in for second. And unfortunately for Daniel Gibbs, ran out of steam at the end to finish third. Excellent run there by, by, by Thomas in the same lane one that you explained would be quite a task as you have a, lot, a bit more bending to do. Uh, 
from out of lane one. So as we await the times. 48.83 for Thomas. And 50.66 for Murray. Yeah, so not the fastest time so far, but we've gone through half. Just uh, we're at the halfway stage of the men's 400 meters here. And another big field in this one. Daniel McDougall of UE is in one. In lane number two, we have Kareem Gibson. Kareem Gibson of Mountain Eagles. He is in two. In lane number three, Christoph Belgrove of IG Fastlane. He is there in lane number three. And I'm seeing Jaden James of Abilene Wildcats is uh, in uh, just by his blocks there in lane number four. Uh, if anything, there is no Alessandro Govaya of Eastern Flyers. He's not competing in this event. Isaiah Jones of Tobago Falcons. He is in lane number six. And uh, Concord, they have uh, an athlete in lane number seven. And that is Jeremiah Dick, uh, Dixon. Memphis's uh, Joshua Miller is not going to be competing in the uh, this event here today. So no athlete in five, no athlete in eight. So the final field, McDougall one, Gibson two, Belgrove three, James four, Jones six, Dixon in seven. We're at the halfway point of the men's 400 meter dash. Still three races to go after this one. Well, there's the gun for the start. Fox, if anything. Miller, if anything, is not in the race. Dixon is starting well on the outside in lane number seven. He's already taken up a significant lead here, but Belgrove and Gibson are starting to go well. Miller is continuing with his lead out there in lane seven, and we have Miller as well in second place so far as they approach the 150 meter mark. And Dixon coming into the turn here. He has a, uh, he's trying to explode off the turn here, Dixon. But the competition is coming from Kareem Gibson, the man from Mountain Eagles, has gone ahead. And he is showing his wings now, flying ahead. Gibson's starting to tire, and he is tying up. But uh, no doubt about uh, the winner here. Kareem Gibson gets there. Dixon in second place. And what, uh, yeah, he really ran out of steam. He had a very good start. I think burned too much of his energy in the early 150 meters of the race. Yeah, definitely. It's all about control with this event. You start hard, you control at the back stretch, and then you execute again from the 200 or 150 meter mark to take yourself home. So that time that he stamped would be 50.30 for Gibson and 52.20 uh, for Dixon. So Gibson 50. and Dixon. <laughs> Gibson and Dixon. Those were the two. And uh, Gibson's time, 50.03. Not fastest uh, so far. We've had a 48.00. Uh, Manny Kashi yep. of uh, Memphis was the man who did, in fact, uh, get that time earlier. Oh, actually, Nikolai Lewis of Concord. Yeah. That was a change. Yeah, that yes. was a change. Nikolai okay. Lewis. 48.00. So there is, let's see here, no athlete in one for the section five here. We will have Jordan John. He is in lane number two, no athlete in three. Kim Richards of uh, Stallion was due to have been racing in three. Cyril Sumner of Memphis, he is in lane number four. Tobago Falcons, uh, Moses McConey, uh, he is there, and he is in lane number five, uh, the Falcons man. Abilene Wildcats, uh, Che Lara, 
of the familiar name. He is uh, in lane number six. Sedan James of uh, Concord is in lane number seven. And Abilene Wildcats, Jaden Sutherland in lane number eight. Yeah. Uh, so say, uh, over the years, the Abilene athletes have all been dominant in the 400 meter mark. This event, we have two athletes. So let's see how it goes. And uh, given the tradition of Abilene Wildcats with a three-time Olympic yeah. <laughs> coach there, three-time Olympian uh, involved in the coaching, you would expect to produce uh, quite a few 400-meter runners over the years. So here we go once again. Here are the lane assignments. John in two, Sumner four, McConney five, Lara six, James seven, and Sutherland in eight. Even start here, but already starting to make uh, his move is Shane Lara, the Abilene Wildcats man is uh, blazing away and he's already gone past uh, Sedan James and Jaden Sutherland. Excellent start there by Lara as he is powering down the back stretch as he approaches the 200 meter mark. Right behind him we have the athlete and it seems like uh, Sorrel Summer of Memphis and Lara is powering away to the home stretch. Lara has the bend to contend with and Sumner is on his tail at the moment here but Lara still showing a huge amount of speed here Sumner has a huge amount of work to do Lara starting to s slow down but he's at maximum speed and he's gonna get there that is the fastest time of the day no doubt about that Lara gets the win ahead of Cyril Sumner of Memphis who put in a brave attempt but couldn't deal with the speed of Che Lara the Abilene Wildcats man dominant in a section seven of the race of the four men's 400 meters excellent one there by lara i'm sure he was a bit underneath 48 seconds seems to be uh, exactly 47.30 and that's the time stamped there by che lara and fastest time of the yeah, day wow by some margin day. yeah uh, 49.18 by sumner and uh 40 53.26 by james sumner and james well, if he'd won, it would have been the start of Sumner time, yeah. shouldn't it? <laughs> so, section six now. Let's go to section six and tell you who's out there at the moment. I'm um, seeing Anderson <laughs> Hamilton of Phoenix Athletic. Uh, he is out there in the white and red of Phoenix Athletic. He is in lane number two. In the orange of uh, the Alpha team is Jelani Paris. Uh, he's in lane number three. Jordan Noel of IG Fastlane in the black of uh, IG Fastlane. He is in lane number four, Abilene Wildcats. Uh, they are represent well, they're not represented in this one because I'm not seeing any sign of Jahi uh, Hernandez of Abilene Wildcats. Shaquille Francis of Simplex is in six. No athlete in seven, so there's no Tariq Springer of Memphis. And Jelani Chinyelu of uh, Burnley he is in lane number eight he is due to compete in a couple more events for the day yeah so he has a busy schedule today Jelani Chinyelu so here are the lane assignments once again Hamilton in two Paris in three Noel in four Francis in six and Chinyelu in eight starter gets uh, the sign from uh, the race officials that all is well and good. A bit fidgety at uh, the moment is uh, Tyreek Springer. Yeah, Tyreek Springer just looking a little bit fidgety. Now he gets back in. Uh, just managing that nervous energy at the start of the race. Definitely. A big hop there from Jelani Chinyelu, the Burnley man, before they start. The rest have been a bit quiet there in their blocks concentration at a hundred percent right now section six of the men's 400 meter is underway and this is a fairly even start here now starting to make his move 
is Springer, Tyreek Springer of Memphis has started to make his move, but he's been passed on the outside by Shaquille Francis, who's That's making like the running. Francis has taken the lead as he heads to the 200 meter mark, and he is really exceptional right now. And we have the athlete, one, two, three, let me see. That is Noel, Joel no jo Jordan Noel of uh, IG Fast Lane as they head to the 100 meter mark. If anything, John Noel is the man who's looking stronger as he gets into the turn and he has a slight lead on Francis. Francis has some work to do. He's been left in the dust here as Jordan Noel takes control of the race and wins it quite comfortably in the end. Just coming in under 49 seconds. Uh, not fastest of the day, but it was a nice little battle between Noel and uh, Francis there for the victory in Section 6 of the men's 400 meter race. Your winner, Joel, uh, Jordan Noel. Jordan Noel. Well, let's uh, check out that time for Jordan Noel. Time 49.20. 49.20 uh, for Jordan Noel. Not the fastest of the day. Francis just behind him in 49.92. And Chilin Yellow, 52.65. So we're on to the final race of the day. And uh, let's see who is out there right now. I think there might be a couple of changes for this one. John Lead, the unattached runner. He is in uh, lane number one. Uh, in lane number two, Jordan Richardson uh, is in lane number two. Francisco Cooper of Concord, uh, he is in lane number three. The, the Concord man just back uh, getting into just uh, into his blocks at the moment. Abilene Wildcats, Deshaun Cole, here's a name that we know well. And Deshaun As Abilene from Abilene Wildcats, and he's heading to the 200 meter mark, staggering and taking the lead. Right behind him, we have the athlete uh, Woodley of Memphis Pioneers holding on as as Cole takes on to the last 100 meter mark. Yes, yeah, Cole in front and Woodley just behind him. Woodley has a lot of work to do to catch up, and Cole is not relenting at all, continuing to fire on the pressure here. The Cole, but belatedly, there's Woodley trying to mount the challenge. Cole has enough to get across the line. He's been hot today, Deshaun Cole, and he gets the win, but not the fastest time of the day, coming in at just about 51 seconds or so. Look of frustration on the face of Francisco Cooper, who kicks the field in disgust as he gets across the line. Well, let's wait and see the time stamp there by Cole. 49.52 49.52 for him and the fastest time among the in the 400 meter dash uh, was that 47.30 from Lara I believe it is and that's uh, going to yeah, be the yeah. end of the 400 meter events for, boy, for men and women here today we do have the women's 800 meter event coming up uh, there's also the women's shot put and the men's 800 meter run will also take place shortly. And of course, the shot put events is taking place uh, at the training field. So, uh, unfortunately, we don't have any footage of that event at the moment.
on the screen we have the men's long jump. We have the athlete from uh, QRC. That is Cristiano Perez about to take his leap. Smooth jump. Excellent jump there by Perez of QRC. Perez awaits to see his jump, how far he has jumped. Here as we await the athletes for the 800 meter dash. Again, we have the women 800 meter dash. We have uh, six athletes, only one, one section of this event. Well, we do have the 800 meter coming up, the men's <clears throat> long jump taking place at the moment. Daniel Proverbs of Stallion, the last man to jump there. I don't think he was uh, entirely happy with it. It is a legal jump. Yeah. Competing with that uh, very stylish headgear. Yeah. His durag. <laughs> What's it called? A durag. A durag, yes. A durag. That's right. it's, a, it's to get his waves. <laughs> his waves on swim. Uh, really made popular. The youth of uh, New York. This one we've already seen. Christian Perez, so uh, Terry Kinson, so listed to compete in this one. My uh, is just about to jump. meter run and here's where Francis and 
brilliant laps around the field. 800 meter is always considered a sprint as well. It's a lot of endurance, a lot of strength and a lot of speed is needed. Technically it is the, the shortest of the middle distance, but the way the yes. engines run it, oh. it's a sprint. It's a sprint. <laughs> <laughs> so as the Shukla already gets out there quickly, Francis is at least about five meters ahead of her. And uh, let's see who's going to get to the transition point early here. It looks like it's going to be Francis. And uh, given that Shukla has been competing in, in another event earlier, you might see a bit of a reduced performance from her. Shukla settles into second place and Francis into third. Is it the of Memphis Pioneers there in the lead? Charlene Phillip. She looks to be heading to the first lap, along with Shukla right behind. Shukla is finding the time here as she's just behind a Charlie and Phillip. Phillip looking in good condition here, but uh, if anything, Shukla is looking quite comfortable as she's closing and narrowing the gap on her as they get to the, to take the bell here. Shukla just behind her. Shukla has already run three and a three-quarter laps here on this track. And as we get into that, uh, just going over the line, here's Shukla on her shoulder and going past. It seems to be like Francis has fallen back, all the way back to second to last. Francis uh, has fallen back, definitely. She's now in fourth place. And, and uh, might be seeing the signs of that earlier effort of her running the 1,500 meters. Just about 250 meters to go here, and it seems that Charlie Phillip is now a step four. She's starting to tire and she is starting to slow down. But Shukla is looking as strong as ever here in this race. She is racing away. Shukla is extending her lead as she heads to the final 150 meter mark. She seems to be taking this. Also coming across the line there was the IG Fast Lane athlete, Makaya Martin. Uh, minutes, and here's the untouched runner, Mariska McClatchy, uh, coming across uh, the last runner to finish uh, the race here. Getting a nice round of applause yes. as she gets across the line. Good effort from her. Of course, all of this is part of her development as an athlete. Uh, not everyone's going to go to the Olympics, but it's all part of your development to get to, to maximize your potential exceptional to see athletes finishing the race no matter what position they're in. So, women's shot put uh, is taking place on the field outside. A bit of a strange decision some might feel uh, to have it outside there, but uh, I understand it has something to do uh, with the field being damaged uh, by the shot put, which is a little bit surprising to hear because it's been going on for years. For years yeah. And I'm sure that would have been accommodated for Shukla's time, by the way. 2 minutes 24 seconds uh, in uh, to win the race. Yeah, so that, uh, of course, the shot put usually takes place just behind that area you're looking at at the moment here. Yeah. And that's where the, the, sh the, sh the, the metal ball usually lands. And uh, if you're a right winger playing in a, a match here, it might be a bit of a challenge here. <laughs> you might fall in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't create the holes that huge, that huge but, but <laughs> I can understand the logic behind yeah. why it's been moved. And uh, with a lot of uh, TNT Pro League, TTPP, 
TNT Professional Football League matches being played, of course, the season coming to an end. I guess it has a lot to do with aftercare. Um, yeah, that, that would uh, have something to do with yeah. it. Our intrepid producer, Mr. Wayson, has been sleuthing around and finding all the relevant information for us. And uh, the 1500 meter event in the books. We've also had the 800 meter event, uh, men, uh, the, the women's 800 meter already there. Now we have two events uh, coming up in the men's 800 meter race. Uh, just to talk a little bit more about this particular event, which is coming up. Uh, it's, of course, as we mentioned, the shortest middle distance event mm -hmm. on the athletics program. The, yes. the way the Kenyans run it, it's mm -hmm. called a two lap sprint now. Two lap sprint. <laughs> And uh, tactics uh, certainly yes. do play a huge part in this one. Yeah. You, you, you start out too early, yeah. as we see with a couple of athletes, yeah. and you will find yourself uh, struggling at the end. Yeah, because a lot of athletes who actually make the first, the first 400, like an actual 400 meter mark, with stamping really fast times. So that's why we consider it a sprint, because I mean, it's blistering time some of these athletes make their first 400. In. Of course, there so many of the athletes uh, like to go for that. Uh, they would conserve some energy for the second lap, but the Kenyan athlete, the great Kenyan athlete, David Radisha, he had a different strategy at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. He'd go at you and say, come get me if you like, if you can. <laughs> Catch me if you can. Catch me if you can. And Ginger most Brown. of the time, they couldn't. <laughs> yeah. So here is the uh, men's 800 meter. This is the first, uh, first of two races, Elijah Herbert of Burnley, Bryson Nangafuk of uh, Fatima College is there, Aidan Joseph of One A Week, Caleb John of Point Fortin New Jets due to also race in this one, along with Anton Charles of Pfizerbad, Jaden Gomez of One A Week, Levi Smith of Fatima College, Luke Williams of QRC also in there, as well as Zion Charles of the TNT Defense Force. There they go with the start of the men's 400 meter event. And they're all racing to see who can get to the transition point fastest. And it appears that Anton Charles of Faisabad is the one who's going to get there first. Let's see what his tactics will be. He gets uh, in front of everyone. And is he going to try to push for the front here? He is at the moment. Uh, point four to New Jets man. Caleb John just behind him. And uh, Burnley's Elijah Herbert just behind those. Defense Force Zion Charles uh, lingering in sixth place at the moment. And as they come into the turn for the first time, it is Pfizer Bands Anton Charles that has the lead. And he's opening up a bit of a gap here. Challenge now starting to come from QRC's Luke Williams, who is in third place. Take the bell as they go into the second lap. QRC only seem to fade a bit as he seems to get his stagger on as he heads to the next lap. The athlete of uh, Faisalabad is taking the lead. Seems to be at a 15, a 15 meter lead. The athlete from QRC is coming into second place right now. It's a good little run here from Luke Williams, who's into second place, and it is in fact uh, Charles that has opened up a quite a sizable lead. And if anything, he's not looking like he's going to relent oh, at any time soon. He still has the endurance, he still has his stamina, and he has his stride. So he's coming straight home, straight to the line in first place. The field looks beaten at the moment as Anton Charles of Faisalabad is into the straight, and he is looking quite comfortably. If anything. He is starting to pour it on here. He's looking for a time uh, that will get him on one of these national teams. Here he is. Anton Charles driving for the line. He's putting everything into it. Will he get there under tw two minutes? Maybe just a shade above two minutes. Here is the point 14 New Jets athlete, Caleb John in second place. And uh, he just gets across there in about two minutes, six or so. And unfortunately for Luke Williams, had to settle for fourth place. He collapses on the track, yeah. uh, just <laughs> off the track on the field. And uh, the athletes come across the line. Just one more to come in. But uh, no doubt about your winner here for this one. Uh, a nice run there for Faisabad's Anton Charles. When the athletes it hit the ground, work, isn't it? Yeah, when the athletes hit the ground, you know, you know they give it their all. Yeah. <laughs> 
the walking wounded they are at yeah. the moment here for the uh, these athletes in the men's 800 meter race a race that has produced some fine runners from Trinidad and Tobago over the years uh, the first uh, TNT runner among the men to compete at the Olympics was back in 1948 Wilfred Tull the Ayer as they call him wow. uh, he would have competed at the London Games back in 1948 he also competed in the 1500 meters, Wilfred Tull, who was maybe a couple of hours away from having his name on a stadium here in Trinidad. Wow. He and uh, Manny Ramjohn famously won gold medals back in the 1946 CAC Games, but Ramjohn won it first. Yeah. He got his name on the stadium and, and uh, he didn't. Uh, there is Luke Williams, uh, who is really, uh, they've had to peel him off the turf here. Yeah. Uh, the medical staff is having a close look at it. Meantime, uh, the field is has assembled for the second of the races here. But real concern here for Luke Williams, who's just trying to get up, but uh, not able to stay on his feet at the moment. He's the only of the athletes who's not been able to get up. We've now seen Anton Charles of Pfizer just get off the track. <laughs> so Charles is fine, but uh, Luke Williams just outside of your picture. Just, just Charles. He really did fight coming on to the end of the race. Certainly he did, was yeah. In, he was in, in top contention for second place. Well, David Herbert of the Defence Force in Black. Jonathan Lamite of Genesis in lane number two. In lane number three in the Black of Appaloosa is, well, Tyler Austin. Seeing, uh, well, the Burnley runner. There are two Burnley runners, Dylan Gomez and Emmanuel Herbert. Uh, one of them is definitely out there. Six. There's the start of the race, and it is Emmanuel Herbert of Burnley. Uh, he is the one who is out there for in the familiar colors of Burnley, the flames of Burnley, and he's the one who's going to get to the transition point first and is racing towards the line. Herbert of Burnley is actually in taking the lead and right behind him seems to be one of the unattached athletes, right? And it is Tyler Austin of Appaloosa who's taking the lead over Emmanuel Herbert of Burnley. And the unattached athlete, as you mentioned, uh, just coming in in third place. And uh, Jonathan Lamite of Genesis is uh, moving into third place. In fact, he's going to take over the lead now from Austin, who is starting to drop back dramatically here. And uh, by default, really, Austin has dropped back into third place. And Burnley's Herbert is out in front. Herbert has some problems of his own here because Lamite has just raced past him here going into the back thread and Lamite now has the lead. Lamite seems to be extending the lead with his excellent stride and he seems to know exactly what he's doing. That was some good tactics because he wasn't even in contention at the start of the race and as I said he is extending the lead. He's up approaching the 150 meter mark and that's it. The athlete from Burnley has been, seemed to be burning out his fumes. Yeah, he's dropped back into third place now. Herbert, he's been overtaken uh, by uh, Austin, who's now found his second win. But no doubt about who's going to win this one. Uh, Jonathan Lamit of uh, Genesis uh, is looking as strong as ever here. As he strides towards the line to take the win, he's not going to come in under two minutes, just about two minutes and uh, three seconds. Second place. Uh, we'll go to Tyler Austin, and here is the young Burnley athlete, Emmanuel Herbert, in third place. And the rest of the field uh, now trying to strive across the line. Sure, I think uh, there would be. We have one more athlete coming home. Yeah, the final athlete uh, just coming in across the line. That's going to end off the men's 800 meter event here. Uh, let's see what the fastest time is. Maybe just a shade over two minutes. A 
of the shot of the Northern Range here, just behind the Hazley Crawford Stadium. Uh, looking in much better shape with the uh, rains that we've had, a couple of pui trees yeah. in the background. <laughs> uh, that signals that more rain will be coming here. More rain. Looks beautiful and lush. And I know our producer, Ian Wason, has been doing his anti-rain dance. Make sure we get through the meat unscathed here. Okay, we seem to be having the woman discuss straw, one kilogram. Herbert, two minutes, 2.46. That was the winning time. I see the official is marking, but I'm not, I'm not seeing athletes on the field for the women discuss straw. Yeah, they are doing that at the moment here. So women's discus uh, still to come. Uh, women's 400 meter hurdles also to come after that. So we're moving along quite well here. And uh, in terms of uh, today's event. On, on the screen, we have the men's long jump. Hartley is waiting his distance. Again, let me call out the athletes competing in the men's long jump. We have Timothy Hamilton of IG Fast Lane. We have Drew Anthony Wilson of Mercury. We have Cristiano Perez of QRC. We have Jelani Paris of Alpha. We have Michael Paul of Dabadi. We have Daniel Provost of Stallion. We have Jeremiah Fullerton of FAD. We have Carlos Brown of the UTT Patriots. We have Dominic Maxwell of Toko Tafak. Trevon Scott of UTT Patriots. Dylan Gomez of Burnley. Uh, Kyle Lee of Alpha. Tariq Vincent of Concord. And Jabari Richards of Toko Tafak. And Dwayne Herbert of Stallion. These are the athletes competing in men's long jump. Clean jump there by the athlete. Legal jump. Of course, at the last uh, 2020 Olympics, our long jumper was unfortunately he contracted COVID-19 and was unable to compete at, at that event in 2020. Such an unfortunate time in the world. On the track, we have an athlete from the UTT Patriots coming down line. Into the sand pit. Legal jump there by the athlete. Doesn't seem to wait back to see his distance. probably knows it's, it's not what he expected or anticipated. Beautiful day here in Trinidad and Tobago in Port of Spain. The clouds are out, the sun is shining, it's bright. is on the field getting ready to make his jump. And he's out. Seems to be a legal jump there. And it is. 
gets his white flag and he awaits his distance. Approaching the, the sand pit. Oh, excellent jump, but seems to be a scratch there. But he didn't make he didn't make uh, a good distance. On the field, they're prepping for the men and women 400 meter hurdles. Uh, with the women starting first, we have two athletes only. We have uh, Zaya Bruce of Titans and we have Chanel Green of the Tobago Falcons. The only two athletes competing in the women 400 meter hurdles. With a height of, of uh, 0.762 meters. Another athlete there with an exceptional jump. Let's see if he... Yes, a legal jump there. In the men 400 meter hurdles, the height will be 0.914 meters. Uh, we have four athletes representing uh, Concord, Davidi Memphis, and TT Defense Force. That's just Joshua Williams, Jeremiah Francis, Kadesh Roberts, and Torin George. All the athletes will be competing in the men's 400 meter hurdles. We also anticipate a men's 300 meter run, woman long jump, woman 200 meter dash. That should be rounding off in the evening. Another athlete on the field as he tries to get into the sand pit. Seems to be an illegal jump there. Or an illegal jump there for athlete as he awaits his distance. So many different clubs, so many different colors. Uh, That seems to be the end of the men long jump as we await the other four events to wrap up this evening's proceedings. Yeah, this is the results for the uh, women high jump finals. We have Kanisha Shelbourne of Oasis. Uh, committing a height of 1.60 meters and in second we have Tanique Vincent of Concord with a height of 1.55 meters so that was her best of two
It's a beautiful day in Port of Spain at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. We have some supporters all the way in the heat with their umbrellas. It's, it's, it's not a packed stadium. <laughs> so I'm guessing why they choose to sit on that side. But I guess they have their reasons. So the athletes are on the field awaiting the start of the women. 400 meter hurdles. We have two athletes on the field at the moment. That is Zaya Bruce of Titans and Chanel Green of Tobago Falcons. In the men javelin throw, 800 grams, we have the finals Diaz, Anthony Diaz with 60.87 meters, and he's represented a 0.14 new jets. We have Andre Andrews, unattached, with 48.69 meters. We have Akeem Francis of Mountain Eagles, with 37.56. And uh, Sherwin Marshall of TTAMA, with 36.35. Once again, fast, longest uh, distance, 60 point. On the field, we have the women, 400 meter hurdles, Bruce and Green. And the lead, it seems to be Bruce of Titans, taking the lead as she approaches the 150 meter mark. She has three more hurdles to, to take. Here she is extending her lead as she approaches the final. Zaya Bruce onto her final hurdle. And Green onto her final. And that's it. Zaya Bruce of Titans takes the lead. Chanel Green of Falcon. So that's it. Zaya Bruce and Chanel Green. I see the times. Time for Bruce is 1 minute 10 seconds. And Green, 1 minute 17. The athletes for the men 400 meter hurdles are heading across to their respective places. Again, for this, we just just one event, uh, four athletes. We have Joshua Williams of Concord, Jeremiah Francis of Dabadi, Kaddish Roberts of Memphis, and Torin George of Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force. These are the athletes that will be competing in the men's 400 meter hurdles. 0 0.194 meters. The view of Movie Town there. On the screen, we have the boys under 20 shot put. In first place, we have Jelani Chinilu with 12.41 meters. We have David, Javante David, unattached with his best of 10.82. We have uh, Kanye Niki with his best of 10.78 and we have Addison Second with his best of 10.35 meters. So again, the winner of that event is Jelani Chinli Yilu with 12.41 meters. As the boys under 20 shot put, all these, those events were taking place on the training field.
So just a little break here as we await the athletes to get into their starting blocks. So much anticipated 400 meter hurdles. On the screen we have the results for the men triple jump in the finals. We have Christopher Latouche with 15.01 meters of UTT Patriots. We have Daniel Igbi. <laughs> we have Daniel Igkoi with 14.76 meters. We have Cristiano Perez with 13.24 meters. We have Dominic Maxwell, 12.99 meters of Toko Tafa. And we have Dwayne Herbert with 12.5 meters. And I guess we have some of these athletes also competed in uh, the sprints. So competing in the, print, the sprints and the triple jump events. And that would be uh, Cristiano Perez and uh, Dwayne Herbert. So again, taking the lead of this event would be Christopher Latouche with 15.01 meters of the UTT Patriots. On the screen we have the men javelin throw 800 meter 800 grams sorry in the final we have Anton Diaz with 60.87 we have Andre Andrews with 48.69 unattached athlete uh, we also have Marshall of the TTAMA with 36.35 meters So on the field, the athletes for the 400 meter hurdles, men are getting ready. They are getting their warm, practicing their first jump. And on the screen, we have the long jump. into the pit. Excellent jump there. Legal jump. We are on the field with the men's 400 meter hurdles in lane 3. We have Williams, Concord. Lane 4, Francis, Dabidi. Lane 5, Memphis, Roberts of Memphis. And lane 6, George of Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force. And they're off. Excellent start there by the athlete George of Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force as they all onto their second hurdle. George seems to be holding the lead, but we have the athlete Williams of Concord is also creating a stagger as they approach the 200 meter mark. One hundred and fifty meters to go. There seems to be a fight between uh, between Robertson, George, Memphis, and Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force as they approach the final stretch. It seems to be the athlete of Memphis, Roberts, 
Roberts and George coming home onto the last hurdle. It seems to be Roberts. But George is giving him a good fight. But Roberts is going to take it. Roberts for the win. Memphis Pioneers. Roberts of Memphis Pioneers took the men 400 meter hurdles. Followed by George, by Torin George of the Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force. Excellent run there by Roberts and George. The time stamp there for Roberts is 53.95, George 54.20, and Francis. You get quite get that time. Francis 54.58 so that was it the men 400 meter hurdles as we await the start of the men 300 meters run on the screen we have the women triple jump results uh, and first we have Kanisha Shelbourne with uh, 12.29, we have second, Nathaniela King of Concord Athletic, 10.60 meters. That's the woman triple jump. by the athlete in long jump. And of course we await the women's 200 meter dash that will be the event to close off this evening's proceedings. We're expected to finish today at 3 p.m. So things seem to be going as anticipated on schedule. On the screen we have the men shot put 7.26 kilograms. And first we have Romeo of Apollosa with 18.30. We have Akil Antonio of Neon Wolves with 14.95. We have Devon Murray of UE with 11.35 meters. We have Donico Cordington sorry, with 10.81 of UE. And we have Kyle Herbert of Stallion with 10.64 meters. So again, taking the lead and the win would be Hezekiel Romeo of Apollosa with 18.30 meters. That's the men shot put 7.26 kilograms and again all these events would have been taken would have been done uh, the f outside field the training field of the Heasling Crawford Stadium here in Port of Spain so on the field they are setting up for the 3,000 meter run you seem to have a full field of 10 athletes in the long jump, a bit of a, a twist there. At least seemed to have damaged himself with that jump. He twisted in the air, mid-air, landing on the side and, and on his side. Seemed to have landed on his rib, his ribs. He seems to be down, and they're calling for the EMTs. Of course, with these events, anything can happen. It's a sport that 
requires a lot from an athlete. is there to check on the athlete, see if he's okay. Taken away, all covered in sand, this is landing wasn't as expected. So again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Track and Field Series 2. Series number three, the entry is TT. Right here, here's the Crawford Stadium. I'm Jay Brown. On the field, we have the long jump. Legal jump there. Another athlete line lined up for the long jump. Ah, foul jump there. Crossing the black line by a big distance. catering needs, weddings, baby showers, sporting events and much more. Racial Catering Services. WhatsApp at 715-0696.
for all your catering needs, weddings, baby showers, sporting events and much more. Racial Catering Services. WhatsApp at Lovely shot of uh, one Woodbrook place uh, that's uh, just off uh, the Woodbrook area, prosperous area. Told that it's three point something million dollars for one of the apartments. <laughs> the men's uh, 3,000 meter event, and uh, as they say colloquially, lo locally, the big horses are in this one. And uh, there is one of them in second place there at the moment. That is Nicholas Romani, who we saw win the 1500 meters earlier today. He is uh, just uh, behind the leader at the moment. And also uh, due to run in this one, I'm not seeing him here. Uh, there he is, Tafari Waldron, uh, the recently crowned 5000 meter champion. He is running in, uh, in third place just behind Romani. And uh, this is the interesting thing here. Both of these men train together. Men's long jump uh, still continuing also at the same time. And uh, that was the UTT Patriots jumper, Carlos Brown. Back uh, to the 3000 meter event. And uh, this behind there in fourth place, that's Darius Harding, who we saw earlier in the 1500 meter event. He is yeah. lurking around in fourth place at the moment. But the top three are involved in a big battle at the moment. Six laps to go. This is an event of stamina and endurance. As you said before, the horses are out. Yeah, Trinidad and Tobago has produced some fine athletes uh, in uh, this particular event. Uh, Sheldon Monderoy, one of those who has competed internationally. Pilla McShine at the women's level. Some more 3,000, there's the field for it there. And uh, Nicholas Romani listed as uh, number nine. And uh, of course, Darius Harding and uh, Tafari Waldron. Waldron is absolutely impressive here. The last time he raced at the Hazy Crawford Stadium, broke the national junior on the 20 record. Their event, there he is uh, just rolling up on the outside of Romani. And uh, these two are starting to take control of the race now. Many see this race as a two-horse race, but the youngster just behind them, uh, unfortunately, we're not getting a good sight on his, uh, his number at the moment. He's the man who is uh, putting, uh, putting in a very good show here today. Uh, I think that's the same athlete who challenged him at the, uh, in the 1,500-meter event. So that's... Uh I believe this might be Curtis Brereton of uh, ZC Athletic, if I'm not mistaken. He's in third place at the moment, uh, but right now, uh, it's a bit of a musical chase. Oh, he's dropped out. Oh, something happened there, and he dropped out. 
Now he put in a really fine run in the 1500 meters. I believe that is in fact Burton. Put in a really good run in the 13, the 1500 meters, uh, but now has run out of steam here, and it's been left up to a two-horse race between Romany and Waldron. And look at Waldron now. He's opened up a little gap here on Romany. We were talking in the last event, last time round in these development meets about at some point in his yeah. career, Romany is going to be uh, playing second fiddle to Waldron. Is today the sign that that may happen because Romany has started to really drop off. Now remember, just to add a, a little note in there, Romany actually ran in the 1500 meter. Definitely. No, don't forget we have four, four more laps to go and anything is possible with uh, four laps. Yeah, that is right. Still a long way to go here, but uh, Waldron starting to put down the hammer and has opened up a 20-meter gap on Romany at the moment. We haven't seen this before, but uh, don't write off Nicholas Romany. You do so at your peril. He's still trailing now, and Waldron making a real statement here. Yeah, he's also looking back, making sure he is where he needs to be, keeping his competition at a distance. Well, and uh, wondering the lingering effects of Romany. He just ran about half an hour ago, if so much. So that uh, will certainly be playing on him at the moment here. Waldron hasn't raced for the day. He did not compete in the 800 or the 1500 meter event. And here he is. He's opened up a really good gap here on Romany. And I don't think uh, we're going to see him relent and give that up here today. Remember, he is the reigning. Uh, the the two-time Karifta 5,000 meter champion. This is a shorter distance for him. So he's uh, continuing to go on here. Now just going past the line uh, for the first time is one of the Masters athletes competing in the event. But uh, this is an impressive performance here from this very impressive youngster, Tafari Waldron. I remember last year, after he won the Karifta gold medal, he came back home mm. and he was seen, he had started training immediately. And when asked about it by the media, he said the work is not done. There's yes. more work to be done. <laughs> and yes, his yes. work ethic certainly is unimpeachable in so many ways. Wow. Here he is now, and he's extending the lead on Romani, but... As we say, Romani has it well within him to, to launch a fight back, even from this distance back. Oh, definitely. Waldron is extending that lead. The first, the first time he came across the lead was about 20 meters. Now it's almost 80 meters. Yeah, it and certainly he is. is. holding it. With two laps to go, he's crossed the line at just about 6.35, and he continues to lead here. And he and Romani train with each other, so he knows very much the potential of Nicholas Romani. And he knows when he has him, when he is beaten, he knows when he has him beat. And it seems that he has not beat at the moment here. He's looking back uh, just to see where Romani is. And you can tell there's a huge amount of respect uh, towards Nicholas Romani because he knows what this man has done in local running. But uh, Waldron continuing, and I think he might be a bit surprised at this point at how much he's just blown away the competition. Oh, most definitely. Right? I think Romani is a, a bit picking up some pace right now knowing that he has two more laps to go so it, it's the right time to shorten that distance still continuing to look back he's uh, showing great respect uh, to his training uh, partner and uh, a rival in so many ways and uh, distance running here in trinidad and tobago now we're starting to see a little bit of life here as romani starts to uh, go for it now he has to go for it now because he's a significant distance back and if anything uh, the distance is only closed maybe a couple of meters here. Comfortable lead here for Waldron as he goes into the last lap and uh, Romani is now trying to, at his level best to catch up. Waldron looks back around and sees Romani about 50 meters behind him. I think it's going to be a comfortable victory here for Waldron. Uh, Romani seems to be a bit tired from the events that he competed in earlier in the day. So it seems like Waldron is going to take this comfortably, but, but Romani is picking up some pace right here at the uh, final 300 meter mark. So let's see how it goes. Well, you feel that Waldron still has a lot in reserve because he's just settled into a nice, easy rhythm. Uh, he, he is slowing down, but I think it's just that he knows he has this race under control as he goes past the tent. And now he gets into the final turn here. And Waldron looks around for the final time. He sees that Romani is coming again. And Romani has started to close the gap. 
Well, it's a bit too far now. He continues to come at him, but Waldron is only 50 meters away from the line. Romania will just be about securing a, a good time uh, for Waldron. He's literally cruising across the line. And he does right. in just under 9.4 seconds, a win for him. Romani comes in second. Good battle between the two fierce opponents. Yeah, walking off, walking off very normal. <laughs> very relaxed walking over the line. So the battle now is for the third place position. We have an athlete from Burnley, as you see there in the white cap. That's Darius Harding, who uh, also ran in the 1500 meter event. Finished uh, third uh, place, if I remember correctly. And here he is coming in now to get to the line. Another one of the young youngsters coming up in the business. And uh, Darius Harding is uh, 10 meters away from the line. And there he is, coming in in just under 10 minutes in the 3,000 meter event. Still a few athletes out there. Of course, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, as we mentioned. Uh, they've produced uh, some pretty good athletes here. Pillar Max Shine uh, holds national records in thousand meters and all of those middle distance races. She holds quite a few of them. Uh, Sheldon Mondoroy holds the national record in the 3,000 meters. Eight minutes, 14.16. So by comparison, yep. that's uh, how fast he is. Wow. Or was, I should say. Uh, made the, he, and he, what was impressive is that he recorded that uh, national record in the 3,000 meters. Uh, in fact, he's still on the field. One of the Masters athletes uh, still competing. And there's another athlete on the far side of the ground. So they're coming in to finish off this one. And this will be the end. Last two men in for the men's 3,000 meter event. But uh, just looking back at that. Uh, boys under 20 discus stroll coming up and uh, some familiar names there Addison second uh, is one of those Jelani Chinyelu who we saw competing in the sprints earlier today is uh, also competing here today I guess these two young men are going through a phase that you went through yeah. where your coach had you in all sorts of different <laughs> events <events>. before <laughs> giving you the most difficult of them all yeah. the 400 meters are you sure he liked you I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I'm sure there would have been a lot easier events in the 400 to get you involved in. Oh, but uh, you only get what you are, uh, well, the coach, of course, would have well, yeah, had I a guess, great amount yeah, of faith in you. I guess when that's where you saw the potential. And this is the Masters athlete uh, competing here. Of course, there's... Uh, there are uh, Trinidad and Tobago's Masters athletes compete in many events around the world. And there's uh, a, the opportunity here to qualify for those. Final lap for the final two athletes out there. Of course, there was a lot of confusion uh, during the 5,000 meter event that we had here uh, a couple months, uh, just about a month ago, uh, when Waldron won that uh, 5,000 meter event here in a record time. I tell you, in the 3,000 meters correction, in a record time. Wow. Um, in fact, he had lapped the entire field. Wow. Some of them he had lapped twice. And uh, the two gentlemen that he lapped, uh, who eventually, uh, who thought they had actually won the race ahead of him. Yeah. And then they were told, no, you still have another oh my God. Uh, another <laughs> lap to go. Yeah. And yes, oh. uh, he's coming across the line. Oh, that's a good bit of work there. Throws his hands up. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're accustomed to going around the Queen's Park Savannah, you will be a, seeing this guy, this gentleman, always running. That's Curtis Burton, yes, by the way. always running around the Queen's Park Savannah. Curtis Burton yeah. of uh, CC Athletic. That's the man there. And uh, yeah. i tell you what, I hope to be in his condition when yes, I get yes, to his age. He has been at it for years. Yes, he certainly <laughs> has been. A very familiar figure. And as you mentioned, and now I recognize him. Yeah, he is certainly mm. one. Uh, if you've worked anywhere in the region of the uh, Queen's Park Savannah, as yeah. Ian Wason and I have done for many years, uh, yes, so we would have seen him a lot. Yeah. The discus throw, uh, still there, just warming up for that. You can see many of the athletes still 
doing some practice throws at the moment. That is the men's discus uh, to happen in a little while. And uh, there's a field of eight athletes, uh, as we pointed out earlier, competing in the discus. There's the boys under 20 discus, and then there's the men's uh, five there. Here's the final competitor coming across the line to finish uh, in the men's 3,000 meter race. This is David McDougall, the unattached runner, coming across. Uh, so many of these athletes involved in clubs and uh, the yeah. unattached athletes, they are the unsung heroes and the <laughs> of these events. And McDougall coming across to finish there in just about 14 and a half minutes or so. We will be looking forward to the women's 200 meter dash uh, that's taking place in a little while. They will be setting up for that shortly and the men's discus will also be coming your way shortly here. So there will be a short lull in the action. We'll be back with more. your catering needs, weddings, baby showers, sporting events and much more. Rachel's Catering Services. WhatsApp at 
Welcome back, 2024 Track and Field Series number three, put on here by the National Association of Athletics Administrations of Trinidad and Tobago. Developmental meet here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium in Trinidad and Tobago. This is the start of the women's 200 meter dash. And uh, the 200 meter dash, uh, Tiana Richardson is in lane number two. Uh, just ahead of her, uh, in the Purple of Concord is Rochelle Rollins. Rochelle Rollins uh, out there for Concord. And uh, Alan B. Janelisa Alan B. of uh, Memphis is in four. Talise McCammon of uh, Memphis is in five. Now, I'm not seeing uh, any athlete in four, five, or six. So we can scratch out Alan B., McCammon, and uh, Kayla Melville. Alexis C. Passad of... Uh, Phoenix Athletic is in seven, and Kanisha Batista Burnley uh, was due to have run in eight, but uh, not seeing her out there today. So just the four athletes competing in this first event of the women's 200-meter dash. Richardson in two, Rollins in three, Melville in six, and Sipasad in seven small field of four for the first of the women's 200 meter dash races here and uh, there will be six in all and not seeing the name of Michelle Lee Ahi she won't be competing in these Symphony Patrick is due to race later on though and there is the start and Sipasad has already been overwhelmed there by Melville the IG fast lane Runners already caught up on her here, but the race is really on the inside where Richardson and Rollins are in a, involved in a battle. Well, it's not much of a battle at the moment as Richardson has gone ahead of Rollins and she has taken absolute and firm command of this race. Richardson is going to cross the line first. Rollins is there in second and just limping across the line at the end is a Kayla Melville of IG Fastlane. Looks like she pulled something just 10 meters away from the line but Richardson an easy win for her well, that's away that time that she would have stamped there excellent run there out of lane two she's stamped a time of 25.53 for Richardson yeah so Richardson first uh, Rollins 26.59 just to remind you these are timed finals so the fastest time overall will be the winner of the race not often you see that uh, this is at the developmental level of course it's more a format that's seen in swimming at uh, the olympics uh, we're just about ready for the start of the second race here today in the women's 200 meter event so this one we have in lane number two rhoda smith of memphis in the blue of memphis Concord's Carissa Curtin uh, just beside her in lane number three and in lane number four Abilene Wildcats Kimora Young of Abilene Wildcats is in four uh, Celeste Mateus is due to race out of lane number five six Rodriguez Janessa Rodriguez of Stallion in six Tamia George the unattached runner in seven and in eight Maisha Tobias of Burnley is in lane number eight. Again, 200 meters, another one of the most uh, popular sprints. And we can see we have a lot of heats here. In fact, uh, the first woman to ever race uh, in Trinidad and Tobago colors at the Olympics. It was in the 200 meter event that was back in 1972, a wow. uh, name that uh, I'm sure many would remember fondly, Laura Peer uh, competed in the 200 meters for TNT at the 1972 Olympics. That's not her there, by the way. <laughs> That's one of the athletes involved in the races. And there we go with the start of the second section of the 200 meter event. And uh, Carissa Curtin of, uh, of Concord has already taken command as she's gotten into the turn and she's run a really good turn here and has a big lead already now just uh, trying to challenge for her is uh, Janessa Janessa Rodriguez but uh, it's an easy win here for Carissa Curtin 
who gets across the line I doubt that she has been able to get under the 25.53 second uh, time that was set in the first race but still a comfortable win for Caressa Curtin as she gets to the line uh, running out of lane number three Time stamp there for Curtin will be 25.83. Rodriguez with 26.94. And Young with 27.71. That rounds off the field. So we move swiftly along to section three of our six finals. And just looking along the line of athletes here. Uh, in two, Carice Cialto of uh, Dabody already at uh, her mark in the white and red of Phoenix Athletic Naomi Theodore just uh, behind her and then in the orange of uh, point fourteen New Jets uh, Diamond Paul is also going to be competing we saw her earlier today and uh, there is Michelle Lee Ahi I was wondering if she was going to compete in the 200 meters and there she is in lane number five Michelle Lee Ahi and uh, she is competing for Memphis today. Symphony Patrick of Concord in six. And uh, Tahila Lewis of Genesis in seven. And Thea George of the Unattached Runner is in lane number eight. And uh, I think uh, Symphony Patrick would have also competed against Michelle Liahi yeah. in the 100 meters earlier today. So a great example for her. And tell you what, I'm looking at the, the they do have on the starters list here uh, the date of birth of the athletes. So there's 2007, 2008, 2006, 2007, 1992. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's been around for a while, Michelle yes. Liahi, but she's been a fine servant of uh, Trinidad and Tobago Athletics. Uh, the fastest five times yeah. for a Trinidad and Tobago woman in the 200 meters, they all belong to Michelle Liahi. Mm -hmm. Her fastest time in this event, 22.25, uh, that uh, she... Uh, she did clock uh, during the Olympic final back in 2016 when she competed in three finals wow. at the uh, Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Mm. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this one is her favorite out of the two events that she runs in, 200 meters. So let's see what she, she, she pulls out here today. So just to remind you of the lane assignments, Cielto 2, Theodore 3, Paul 4, Ahi in 5, Patrick 6, Lewis 7 and George in 8. And there's the start, as, as you would expect. It's a good start for Michelle Lee Ahi, but uh, Symphony Fat Patrick has gone ahead of her, and those two are involved in a ding-dong battle as they get into the turn here. Ahi has now gone ahead here. Patrick is putting in a brave fight, but she's no match for the superior speed of Michelle Lee Ahi, who's bearing down on the line and gets there in just over 23 seconds. Flash time of 23.52, not her fastest time, but certainly it is a good time indeed for Michelle Lee Ahi as she gets her season started here. So Michelle Lee Ahi, the winner of the third of the finals at 22.53 is her time. 23. 23, 23 correction. Yeah. 0.53. And there it is. And uh, Patrick in second, 24.25 and uh, getting there just behind, but certainly a lot for Symphony Patrick to measure against uh, the performance by her more illustrious uh, athlete uh, to her side. So for fans who uh, may have been thinking, uh, well, it's another humdrum affair here. Well, they've gotten to see Michelle Liahi run two races here yeah, today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kyle Grew was also out here. He was also, and uh, a very rare appearance from Daryl Brown. Brown yeah. Well, rolling back the years there, Daryl Brown to compete here today. So, we're now up to race number four in the women's 200 meter event. Uh, let's give you the field here. Natalia Joseph of Stallion in one. Akisha Jacob of Concord in two. Tiara Simmons of Burnley in three. Khadija Lee of Genesis in four, Sean L. Williams of UE in five, Amaya Mitchell of uh, Abilene Wildcats in six, uh, Deja Acosta of FAD in seven, and Kazima Thomas of Memphis. She is in lane number eight. She's already raced uh, for the day already.
So it doesn't appear that uh, Deja Costa will be competing today. She is out of this race. And also there's no answer for Akisha Jacob. Her name is not there. And Tiara Simmons of Burnley also not competing. So just the five athletes involved in this one. Natalia Joseph of Stallion. She's uh, in her... She's uh, all alone down at number one, far behind here. There's the start of section four and an excellent start here uh, for Seanel Williams of UWE. And Seanel Williams here, the cries go up for Seanel Williams as she has taken command of this race. Khadija Lee of the Genesis also trying to challenge her for the lead here. And Natalia Joseph is showing some good speed on the outside, but it is Williams that will get to the line first and she gets there quite comfortably as she did earlier today winning it ahead uh, of uh, is that Mitchell who is actually Khadija Lee getting there in second place and Natalia Joseph finishing in third place yeah, excellent run there by Williams let's see the time that she stamped Williams getting to the line with 26.38 followed by Lee with 26.97 and Joseph with 27.48. Yeah, so there's still a bit of work to do here for these athletes. Uh, for many of them, uh, this might be their first uh, 200 for the season. Many of them have uh, raced uh, previously. We've seen a few of these names already here, all hoping to make it international teams. Uh, so we now get to the penultimate race in the women's 200 meter event Hope Halford uh, is not competing today. I think she was also uh, did not compete earlier in the hundred in lane number two. Mountain Eagles, Kiara Balchan. I think you would remember that she uh, she fall started in the one hundred, oh, yeah. and she had to leave the race. Right. So she will be hoping to do a bit better here. Imani Mills of Memphis in three, and uh, Tanique Vincent of Concord. Uh, she is competing in lane number four. She also competed in uh, the long jump earlier today. Yeah. Khadija Pickerin of Abilene Wildcats in five. Burnley's Christy Marie Mirage or Maharaj. Kate Crawford, uh, the unattached runner in seven. Hannah Reed of Phoenix in lane number eight. And uh, when you have a name like Crawford and you're racing in the Hazley Crawford Stadium, <laughs> uh, no pressure. No pressure at all. Uh, there's no Hannah Reed, by the way. Phoenix, uh, oh, there she is. Actually, she is there. She was just having a practice run down the field. No athlete in five. Uh, it doesn't appear that uh, Khadija Pickerin will be competing today. No picker in for Burnley and no Christy Marie Maharaj either uh, for Burnley. So the field that is left, Balchan in two, Mills in three, Vincent four, Crawford in seven, and Reed in eight. And all eyes will be, of course, on Tinique Vincent, uh, who medaled at the Carifta Games recently for Trinidad and Tobago. She and her twin brother, one of three sets of twins on the Trinidad and Tobago team, if you believe that. There's the start, and already Vincent has made a good start, but on the outside, Hannah Reed has gone like gangbusters, and uh, Vincent will have some work to catch up with her here. And Reed is trying to hold on to a lead, but look at the speed shown here by Tanique Vincent. She's still trying to catch up here. Vincent is has some work to do. And Reed has done well, enormously well, to hold on and win this race. Two athletes pushing each other to the limit here. And Hannah Reed did very well racing on the outside in lane number eight uh, to get the win ahead of Tanique Vincent. Thought for a moment that Vincent seemed to be turning it on and then Reed just did enough to hold on to that top speed. 25.68 her time. 25.68. Vincent with 25.75 and Mills with 26.65. Must say, Reed really did help, help her composure. She held it straight to the end. Uh, it was an exceptional run there by Reed. Yeah, she did very well to hold on to that uh, 
and to get the win. Uh, so we move on to the final race in the women's 200 meters. Mariah second uh, is in lane number one. Uh, it doesn't appear that there is an athlete in lane number two. So that's, there's no Janae Murray of Concord uh, in lane number three. Faith Sylvan of UE, she is competing here today. And in lane number five, Keone Devonish of Phoenix Athletics. Memphis, uh, they have Phoenix, Phoenix Athletic, uh, the white and red of Phoenix out there at the moment. And uh, just to finish off the field, Ayodi Simmons of Memphis in five. Charis Peterson, the unattached runner in six. Angel Cumberbatch of Stallion in seven. And Dahlia Blades of Abilene Wildcats in eight. Blades uh, there at the end. So women's, that's the fastest time in the event so far. 25.68, which we saw in the last race. Hannah Reed is the one to beat at the moment. And there we go with the start of the race. Good start for Delia Blades and for Angel Kamabach on the outside. But it is Keone Devonish who is having a real blinder here on the inside. Now she has a slight lead coming off the turn. But Devonish is being passed there by Ayuri S Simmons. Simmons is out in front at the moment. And Simmons is battling right now with Kamabach. Simmons and Kamabach. And it's Kamabach that takes it in the end. Just ahead of Simmons. A disappointment there for Simmons, but Cumberbatch held her form well enough to get across the line and take the win. But was her time fast enough to take the overall title here? Let's see the time now stamped. That will be 25.27 for Cumberbatch. So she has done it, 25.27, and Cumberbatch upsets the apple cart. She is the one that has the lowest time and will win the women's 200-meter dash here. Angel Cumberbatch of Stallion with the fastest time. Second fastest will go to Hannah Reed, uh, who has uh, just been pipped there in the last race. And uh, Devonish with 26. So the discus uh, taking place at the same time, but we'll go straight across to the men's 200 meter event. And uh, we will start off uh, with, uh, now there are 13 finals here. Don't let anybody tell you the 200 meter is no longer popular in Trinidad. <laughs> That's not the case at all. It certainly wow. is a hugely popular event. And uh, that is certainly due to, in no small part, of course, to Atto Bolden, who was so su successful for TNT. Half of his medals at the Olympics came uh, in the 200 meter. He was also the 200 meter world champion. But then, belatedly, uh, Jareem Richards in his success. Yeah. Jareem Richards, uh, two time Commonwealth Games 200 meter champion. And he is uh, very much uh, the poster boy for the 200 meter event here in Trinidad and Tobago. So here's the starting the starters for this one. Jeron Yiloy of uh, Phoenix Athletic in two. Jaheim Nelson of Genesis in three. Kyle Grant of Concord in four. Kyan Morris of Abilene Wildcats, he's in five. Enoch Joseph of Mountain Eagles, he is in lane number six. Shane Kameho of Memphis is in seven. And uh, Neon Wolves, their representative Kyle Allen is out in lane number seven. And it appears that we will not have uh, with us in this race, Kyle Grant of Concord is not competing.
and there is the start of the first event for the men's 200 meters a poor start for Yeloy who was caught in the blocks but uh, coming around already this is a fine run here and it is Enoch Joseph of Mountain Eagles that has raced out to the front look at him go he has the lead here and will get uh, the victory quite comfortably over Jaron uh, Yeloy who didn't start well but did well to come back and get second place it was a really poor yeah. start there uh, on the outside by Allen correction but Yeloy did well uh, to come back and get second uh, but that was a good win uh, for the Mountain Eagles man Enoch Joseph yeah. 21.54 is his time and in second we have 22.25 for Yeloy and 22.31 for Camille. So we go across to section two and Amali Garcia of Pfizer Band in lane number two, Anderson Hamilton of uh, in the white and red of Phoenix. He is in lane number three. Rashad Riley uh, will race for Abilene Wildcats. He is in lane number four. Concord's Tyrell Springer uh, competing in this event. And uh, Concord's uh, Tyrell Spr Springer is due to be in lane number five. Not seeing any lane, any athlete in five at the moment. So I think that Springer is also out. We also had the Concord athlete Kyle Grant not competing in the last event. And uh, Joshua Perry of Memphis, in the blue of Memphis. He is just on the outside of him. And uh, Josiah Peters of Burnley is in lane number seven, and Isaiah Jones of Tobago Falcons, he is racing out of lane number eight. And we mentioned uh, Jareem Richards. Jareem Richards, uh, th second fastest time in the history of the 200 meters in Trinidad and Tobago, 19.80, which he Atto Bolden's second fastest time. Atto still holds the record for the fastest time by a Trinidadian man, 19.77, which he mm. recorded in Stuttgart, Germany. You can tell I've been practicing my German. <laughs> Stuttgart. Stuttgart. <laughs> Not one of the more popular football clubs in Germany, though, but mm -hmm. still, it's always fun to say Stuttgart. So here we go with the start of section two. Garcia in two, Hamilton three, Riley four, Perry six, Peters seven, Jones in eight. Even start here. The crowd erupts as they get going. And it is Amali Garcia of Faisabad who started very well on the inside. And he takes the turn. He is in second place at the moment here. It is Joshua Perry of Memphis that has gone to the front. Garcia is trying to go with him. But Perry is increasing his speed and gets to the line in 21.81. Huge round of applause here for Joshua Perry with an impressive run to take a win in section two of the men's 200 meter event. Let's see the time, Perry there back, running back to see his time. 21.82 is the official time for Perry. Last yeah, thank year. you. Well, he's getting, <laughs> well, Amali Garcia seems to have more support than the race winner. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the young ladies in the crowd are screaming his name at the moment here. And uh, the Faisabad supporters are just below our position here, so that's why. And the Garcia finishing in second place. Joshua Perry, 21.82, uh, and certainly not, uh, hasn't unseated Enoch Joseph of Mountain Eagles, who has the fastest time so far with 21.51. Let's take a look at section three here. Joshua Williams of Concord in three. Dylan Bernard of the TNT Defense Force in three. Tariq Gould, the unattached runner in four. Cameron Powell of Phoenix Athletic in five. The Janu Bellamy of Burnley in six. Tristan Caesar of Wanawik in seven. And Antoine Anton 
uh, Griffith of FAD, he's in lane number eight. So we will not see Dylan uh, Bernard of the TNT Defense Force. He's not going to be competing in this one. And uh, no runner in lane number one either. So Williams of Concord in two, Gould in four, Powell in five, Bellamy in six, Caesar in seven, and Griffith in Anto Anton Griffith. He is in lane number eight. And there goes the start and a really poor start here for Anton Griffith, who has already been left behind by Tristan Caesar, who has flashed past him. But trying to put on a challenge here is Cameron Powell. Powell has also been left behind because Joshua Williams has emerged as a huge contender to win this one. And Williams is looking quite comfortable as he gets to the line. And uh, that was a pretty good effort there from uh, the man coming in uh, behind him. But it was a good win in the end uh, for the Concord man, Joshua Williams, to get the win. But was it fast enough though? I suspect it's not under 22 seconds. And the flash time tells us that it is so. 22.35 seconds the time. Bellamy with 22.75 and 23.53 for Powell. So that's William, Bellamy and Powell. One, two and three. Well, we've had a slew of defections from this one. No Akko Hislop of uh, Kaizen Panthers competing. There's also no Kalik Abdullah of the unattached runner. He also pulled out of the hundreds earlier today. And uh, there will be no Kyle Grew because as we saw earlier, Kyle Grew pulled a muscle in the 100 meter event and will not compete in the 200s here today. That's very, very sad for him. And I hope that's not the last we'll see of Kyle Grew. He's been, uh, he's had a, uh, he was a national 200 meter champion of a couple of years ago, beat Jareem Richards in the finals here. Yeah. Uh, was that 2017 or 2018? I think it is. Uh, but uh, certainly he's, uh, a man who's had a lot to offer for Trinidad and Tobago sprinting. Yeah. Definitely represented on many world stages. So the foursome who will be involved in this one, Keon Benjamin of Memphis, he is in lane number five. Matthew Graham of UTT Patriots is in six. Jahi McFarlane of Memphis in seven. And Maurice Mansing of Abilene Wildcats is in lane number eight. So those four on the outside will contest section five of 13 finals here in the men's 200 meter event. Real shame that uh, we weren't able to see either Akko Hislop or Kyle Grew in this one. But the four athletes there will provide the entertainment. Keon Benjamin, uh, one of those who we hope to see more of. There we go with the start of the race itself and Benjamin has already gone alongside and taken over the race from Matthew Graham. Benjamin has a big lead heading into the turn and Benjamin is starting to turn on the pressure here. The field has failed to respond and look at this. Benjamin absolutely blazing away and blitz across the line, 20.95. Excellent run there. Excellent run there by Keon Benjamin. That's the fastest we've seen for the day, 20.95. Followed by Graham with 22.05. Yeah, that's the best of the times. And uh, we did see Keon Benjamin compete for Trinidad and Tobago in the 100 meters at the 2020 Olympics. And here he is, 20.95, fastest time of the day uh, in the men's uh, 200 meter event. Uh, will this be a sign that uh, uh, he's attempting to qualify for the Olympics here. Of course, there'll be some more work to do if he is to get uh, near to that qualifying standard. Definitely. He had an excellent start, excellent uh, first 100 meters. So he'll have to be doing some work on his finish. So we head across very quickly here to section 5.14 New Jets. Josiah Semper is in lane number 2. Uh, next to him there is the, the Mountain Eagles man, just, uh, that is Elijah Joseph of Mountain Eagles, Tyrell Dimsoy 
of uh, Faisabad, in the green of Faisabad, and we've seen some impressive performances from the Faisabad team today. They've been very competitive in all the races they've competed in. Andre Cornand of uh, Phoenix is in lane number five. Samson Lewis of Memphis in six. Mosiah George of Tobago Falcons in seven. And Rishon Thompson of uh, Abilene Wildcats. He is in lane number eight. So the we would expect to see a challenge coming here from Dimsoy. He is in the ideal position in any field for the 200 meter event. And especially for the athletes on the outside, of course, the advice to angle your block slightly inwards. Yeah. And don't take too many big steps would uh, come into play. That's one of the things you want to remember as you're getting started in this race. There we go with the start. Not a great start for Rishon Thompson here. Uh, but the Pfizer bad man, Terrell Dimsoy, has started well. Just on the outside of him, there, Elijah Joseph has absolutely taken control of the race. And this is another impressive performance. Can he get under 20.95? He's going for it. Woo! And I think he's done it. Yes, he has. 20.82 for Joseph. It keeps getting better and better. <laughs> So that would be Joseph with 20.80. Sempo with 22.64. No, Dimsoy, sorry, with 22.64. And Lewis with 23.25. One, two, and three. Excellent run there by Elijah Joseph. 20.82, that's the fastest time we've seen for the day. Yeah, they are getting faster and faster, aren't they? Yeah. Just uh, just to put the context in, Atto Bolden's time, 19.77. Nowhere close to that at the moment, but for development meet, providing some fine entertainment indeed. So in uh, section six now, Jaleel Eugene of Concord is in lane number two. Jordan John of Alpha is in lane number three. And uh, Jordan John... Next to him, Memphis, uh, they have Keon John. Um, in fact, I don't think of, is there Keon John? Keon John is uh, it's a question mark over Keon John at the moment. Jaden D'Souza of Phoenix Athletic is in five. Jahi Hernandez of Abilene Wildcats is in lane number six. The untouched runner Jerry Simon was due to race in lane number seven. Let's see if he is there because I don't think I'm seeing. Yes, he is there, in fact, in lane number seven, but there's no athlete in lane number eight. Japan Moses of Stallion is not competing. Yes, so Keon John is also out. So the final field Eugene in two, John in three, D'Souza in five, Hernandez in six, and Jerry is in lane number seven. Fair start for all, but the best start of all is from the Phoenix Athletics man, Jaden D'Souza. Jaden D'Souza racing alongside Jail Jahi Hernandez. Those two moment, but the man who's having the better of it so far is D'Souza, who uh, has a one-meter lead, but he's holding on and will hold on to that as he gets across the line, gets across the line to take the win uh, just ahead of Hernandez. 21.34, not one of the faster races, but uh, a good solid win here for Jaden D'Souza. Twenty-one point three eight is the time. It has been revised down slightly. Twenty-one point five four. Twenty-one point three eight. Uh, the time for D'Souza. Hernandez twenty-one point five four. Eugene twenty-two point six seven the three fastest in these events. So the time set by Elijah Joseph, 20.82, was it? 
that uh, continues to be the fastest time so far. Yep. So a couple of familiar names here in uh, the next event. Sherland King, uh, the unattached runner. Uh, he is in lane number two. Concord's Daniel Gibbs is in lane number three. Memphis, they have Imani Miller, uh, who is just saying a bit of a prayer at the moment as he starts off this one. Kadeem Ryan of Cougars is in lane number five. TNT Defense Force Man, uh, that is Aaron Julian is in lane number six. Kimani Rolox of Abilene Wildcats is in lane number seven. And the final runner is Rabian Sutherland of Stallion. He is in lane number eight. So there's no sign of Julian, TNT Defense Force man, not competing in this one here today. Six runners involved. Section 7 about to get underway. And they go on the bang. That is an excellent start by Daniel Gibbs of Concord. But uh, on the outside, Kimani Rollox of Abilene Wildcats. He is the one that is taken to the front. But here is Kadeem Ryan of Cougars to, taking to the front. And he is the one that looks most likely to get to the line first. Gibbs is there, but it is going to be Kadeem Ryan of Cougars that gets to win quite comfortably in the end. And his time is just a shade under 22 seconds. 21.92. Certainly not, uh, again, not one of the fastest uh, times of the day. But a good solid run from Kadeem Ryan, a lot to work with for him there in the future. 21.92 his final time. Gibbs with 22.47. And 22.57 for Rolox. So here we go now to race a uh, section number eight section eight of 13 finals and just to remind you fastest time so far elijah joseph's 20.82 so we go to section eight where uh in lane number one qrc's Jaden percival kevin cujo of memphis in two nathaniel lee of alpha in three rice bossa of mountain eagles in four jeremiah dixon of concord in five rogel torres of uh, Stallion in six, Alan Rondon of One Week in seven, and Keyshawn Banfield of Abilene Wildcats is in lane number eight. And a couple of defections here, I think I do see. Keyshawn Banfield has just gone on a little bit of a run here. So he is in. And I don't think there we will see Kelvin Cujo of Memphis today. Kelvin Cujo of Memphis is out of this one. Nathaniel Lee of Alpha in three. And we also have the Mountain Eagles man next to him. And also, let's see, I don't think there is going to be competing here today. Jeremiah Dixon of Concord is also out. Rogel Torres, Rondon, and Banfield are in the field. Now that's an. A, a terrible start there for Jaden Percival, the QRC man starting late. Uh, but the best start of all has gone to Stallions, Rogel Torres. Torres has started well, but he has been passed on the inside. And uh, this looks like Rice of Boisson of Mountain Eagles, but that's a good run from Torres to come back and get the win. So, pretty good run in the end. But uh, it was, uh, it didn't seem for a moment there that Boston was going to take it. Yeah. I think something went wrong, maybe a little twinge there because he definitely slowed down. But Torres takes the win in 22.39 seconds. 
Robinson with 22.59. And Banfield with 23.82. So there's a Carifta medalist uh, involved in this race, and that's Tariq Vincent. Uh, he is going to be competing here in uh, Section 9 here. So let's run through the full field for you. Uh, there's no Jesse Murray of Mountain Eagles. He is not going to be competing in this one. So we're going to scratch his name out. Burnley's Isaiah Mahabir is in two. Jaden Sutherland of Abilene Wildcats uh, is in lane number three. Kadeem Herbert of uh, Memphis is in four and will be competing. Tariq Vincent of Concord in five. Adrian Bailey, the unattached runner, is in six. Uh, Malcolm Douglas of FAD in seven and Joshua Raymond of Stallion. He is in lane number eight. The uh, only problem is, uh, let's see, is, is that Banfield on the outside there? And there is Banfield uh, here tied neatly into what's called a man's bun. Is that, is that what they call it? Yeah. I'm yeah, I think that's what they call it. <laughs> don't think I have enough hair for that so here we go the man bun I think that's it it's not there's no apostrophe in it so Mahabir in two Sutherland three Herbert in four Vincent is in five Bailey six Douglas seven Raymond eight and there they go and you would expect Vincent to start well he has started well but on the outside of him Bailey is also going well as long along with uh, Joshua Raymond Joshua Raymond holds the lead as they get into the turn here and as they come into the straight Raymond is under serious threat now because here is Caden Herbert of Memphis and the Memphis man gets to the line in 22.19 seconds easy win here for Caden Herbert uh, Tariq Vincent who has been competing in several events today yep. uh, I don't think he had enough in the tank there to really mount a serious challenge for this one so Memphis 22.19 Caden Herbert very interested in his time and uh, that has been revised up to 22.22 so that's the final time for Caden Herbert uh, who wins section nine of the race so we are into uh, the last four races of the day after this there is of course the discus troll going on so we'll stay with the discus after uh, the 200 meter events to take you through to the end so this is now section 10 here and this one's interesting here because there are some big names including Adele Adele, Adele yeah. correction Adele Coltrust uh, the former Commonwealth Youth Games 100 meter champion and he is listed to compete in lane number four and let's run through the field here Nathaniel Lewis is in lane number one Concord's Denzel Williams is in lane number two Zion Sylvester of Neon Wolves is listed to be in three Adel Coltrust of Abilene Wildcats in four Trevon Stewart of Burnley in five. Darius George, his Burnley teammate in six. Daniel Alexis of Point Fort in New Jets in seven. And Moses Flanders of uh, Faisabad is due to compete in lane number eight. Let's see if Faisabad can continue with their fine trend here today. If you've been impressed, I mean, Faisabad have been, they've been competitive yeah, in all of their races. Pretty well, been doing pretty well. No athlete in lane number six, so there's no Darius George. Uh, his teammate, uh, Travon Stewart, is there. Uh, no athlete also in lane number three, so Zion Sylvester of Neon Wolves is out. Keep your eyes on Adel Coltrus in lane number four. Let's see what sort of form he's in. He gets off to a good start here. Also getting off to a good start is Daniel Alexis, the point fortune new Jets man. He has the lead at the moment as they get into the final turn. Here is Trevon Stewart and Adel Coltrust 
on the outside of him. Coltrus has some work to do, but Alexis is holding on and gets the win. Coltrust is beaten into second place. Trevon Stewart holds on, I believe, for third, but no doubt about your winner, the point fourteen New Jets runner, Daniel Alexis, gets the win. Excellent run there by Alexis. 22.10. Well, that time of 20.82 is aging very well, yeah. as they <laughs> like to say today. And it just set about 10 minutes ago, and he's, it's holding, he's going on very well. So that is the end of uh, section 10. We go now to section 11. Now this one looks like, uh, is it a full field here today? For this one, I think that we won't have Kim Richards of Stallion in seven. He's not going to be competing. Jeremiah St. John, the unattached runner in one, in two. Meshak Charles of Burnley in two. Sean Bosigard of Abilene Wildcats is in three. Jeremiah Grant of Memphis in four. Darwin Sandy of Alpha in five. Abilene Wildcats, Deshaun Cole in six. And in lane number eight, Jaden James of Wildcats. So the Wildcats are dominating here three Wildcats athletes in this race. Can yeah. they get a one, two, three? Let's see. So section 11 just about to begin. The just getting settled into their blocks here for the men's 200 meter event. TNT has qualified athletes since 1948 in this event in the Olympic Games. Uh, this is a good start on the inside by Jeremiah St. John. He has a lot of work to do. He blazes past Mishak Charles. But uh, the man who's making all the running right now is Deshaun Cole. The Abilene Wildcats man is uh, has blazed out to the front. Now, can he get that time that's going to beat everyone here today? Well, maybe not. 21.32 is the flash time here for Deshaun Cole. And the youngster putting in another fine performance here in the men's 200 meters. So certainly, uh, not often we see the earlier races getting the wins, but it very might very well might happen today. Elijah Josephs, 20.82, still holding up very well. Nobody's been able to get anywhere close to that so far. On the key and Benjamin, which is 20.95. 20.95, 20 so yeah. That's only two good. that we had under 21 seconds. And Cole's time, 21.33. That has been revised upwards to 21.33. So just two more races on the track to go. And uh, the discus still to go here uh, for us uh, on track and field series number three here at the Hazley Crawford Stadium. So there will be an athlete in lane number one. Aaron Dowridge, the unattached runner, is in lane number one. Uh, just to the side of him, I'm seeing Makaya Phillip of uh, FAD. He is in lane number two. And uh, it appears that there will be a couple of athletes out of this one. And just to confirm, I don't think we're going to see Darius... Martin of uh, Phoenix Athletic today. No Darius Martin. And uh, Daquan Park of Dabney also appears that he's going to be out of this one. I'll just confirm that for you. Roger Mansing of Abilene Wildcats is there. 
Muriel Mitchell of uh, Concord is also competing in this particular race. And Gershon Adolf, uh, we saw him earlier. It's kind of a difficult name to forget Adolf. And uh, for obvious reasons, uh, <laughs> Solomon Lewis of uh, Memphis is also out there. So no runner in three and four. So here we go with the start of the race, and this is a fairly even one, but if anything, the two on the inside, Dowridge and Phillip have started well, and uh, Dowridge is the one who has a slight lead as they come into the turn here. Gershom though, Gershom Adolf of Stallion trying to hold on to a slight advantage here, and he's done just enough to do so, and gets across the line to win in 23 point one seven seconds the races are getting slow and slow as we're getting up to the end here so 23.17 to Gershom Adolf of uh, Stallion and he wins it in 23.18 and the final time has been revised slightly upwards here so last race coming up Dalridge 23.40 and Mitchell 23.76 uh, the fastest three times in the event. So here we go to the last event, the last of the 200 meter events and the last chance for any of these, for these athletes here to get under the time of 20.82 set by Elijah Joseph seemingly eons ago now. Let's give you the field here and uh, there will be Josiah Franklin is in lane number one. Alejandro Felix of Memphis. I don't think we're going to see him here today. Uh, there is J Jordan Richardson of FED in lane number three. Nanton, uh, Jeremiah Nanton of Adabity is in lane number four. Che Lara, we remember him. He was impressive in the 100 meters. Uh, the Abilene Wildcats man. He's in lane number five. Point four to New Jets. Zacchaeus Charles is in six, Concord Sedan James in seven, and Kareem Gibson of Mountain Eagles there in lane number eight. We've seen some impressive performances from the sprinters of Mountain Eagles today. Uh, most and definitely. Yeah, so we might see another one here. Now the only man out is Alejandro Felix of Memphis. So here we go with the last race on the track uh, for today's meet. Is this going to be the one to break that record of 20.82. Franklin in one, Richardson in three, N Nanton in four, Lara in five, Charles in six, James seven, and Gibson eight. And there we go with the start. And Che Lara, as uh, you would believe, is the one who has started the best here. But it is going with him now. Che Lara, well, he had some company from the point forward in New Jets, Zacchaeus Charles, but now there's a challenge coming here to him, but it's a bit belated from Kareem Gibson, and Che Lara does, wins both of his races here today, 21.13, wasn't fast enough uh, to get the win in the 200 meters, but he has had a good day, Che Lara, winning yeah. both his races in the 100 and 200 meters. I think it's a 400 meter Che Lara round. 400 yes. meters. Correct, <laughs> that's correct, yes. So the 200, 400 meter man. Yes. 21.14 is his final time. So often we see the winners coming from the last race or the second to last. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the winner in the men's 200 meters coming from uh, the fifth race. And that is Elijah Joseph wins the overall title here. Exciting to see uh, 400 and 200 meter athletes whereas you see the 100 and 200 meter athletes. So it was a good run there by Chilara. Certainly was. <coughs> so the discus continues. This is the last event taking place. All of the shot put events have been completed away uh, to the left of where we're looking at at the moment. It's not a bad throw at all. 
In fact, that was one of the better throws I've seen so far in the discus. And uh, that, I believe, was the, it's one of the UTT Patriots uh, throws. So the discus continues here. And very important part. Uh, and those discus we were pointing out, they're about uh, two kil kilograms. If you have trouble bench pressing two kilograms, well, I wouldn't advise you <laughs> <laughs> try this event. You surely pull something. usually find that the discus throwers are well-built men, the kind you will not pick a fight with. <laughs> and Kyle Herbert of uh, Stallion, the next uh, throw here. Uh, remember, it is men and boys competing against each other, I believe, in this one. Uh, still very much in the early part of his career, this particular throw. That's Addison second of uh, FAD. Oh, it's the latest man to throw here. It's quite a big field. Uh, 14 in the context of today that is. 14 throwers involved uh, in men's and boys. Shilani Chinyelu, who we saw earlier in the sprint events. He is going to be uh, competing in the discus here. And Chilani is competing in the boys under 20 discus throw. The 1.75 kilograms mm -hmm. event. Uh, oh, that's good. Wow, that's pretty good. That's the best we've seen yeah, so far from Chilani. Another one of the events that we haven't seen a huge amount of uh, international success for Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, national record is 59.65 meters. None of the throws we've seen so far have gotten anywhere close to that here. Some good ones, but uh, good for the under 20 level. Uh, certainly not a huge amount to shout about so far. I believe this might be Umar Sandy as we're seeing the sprinters starting to hail national champion uh, Umar Sandy. Let's see what he can produce here. A lot of air time Excellent. on that one. Yeah, that's a lot closer to the 50 meter mark uh, from Umar Sandy. That was, in fact, uh, the big man, Umar Sandy. And he beat uh, the record holder, Quincy Wilson, last year. Quincy Wilson uh, would have uh, held, he's held the Olympic, uh, not the Olympic, but the national title. Yeah. And uh, through that uh, distance of 59.65 twice, actually. July 2016 at Bacolet in Tobago, mm. Dwight York Stadium, you would know. And the second time in February 2017 at Dunedin in uh, New Zealand. Uh, so uh, that which is pretty remarkable in itself to tie the sure same is. time, same distance that he threw. Of course, uh, the discus, so, uh, we see more prominence thrown on the discus by the woman, Annie Alexander. 
uh, the national record holder for the discus throw. And get this, the national discus throw for women, the record is not very far away from the men's record. Really? Uh, the men's record is 59.65. Annie Alexander, uh, if I have it correct here, is 58.58. Wow. Uh, we'll check that to make sure that's uh, accurate, accurate, but yeah. Annie Alexander is certainly a, a fine competitor for Trinidad and Tobago. The officials. Oh, tough job for the officials out there uh, in all of the hot sun. All of them well clothed with their <laughs> nice hats and their and their long sleeves to prevent those what they call trucker tans. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of uncertainty here as who is to throw next. I think they're still getting the measurement right. Mr. Kamehu is out there as he usually is. The exuberant Mr. Kamehu. It's really good to see so many uh, athletes out uh, in the field events, right? You usually see so many athletes on the track. But when it comes to field events, it's, you know... Uh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Kameho, the uh, PRO of the N3A's TT, and uh, played a big part in the celebrations when the team came back. He yeah. was very much part of the cheering section, <laughs> and uh, it was a nice spectacle. I'm not, I'm not sure if you saw it online, but uh, yeah. people were there singing to the national team yeah. as they came back, and uh, I think the athletes really appreciated it. Most definitely. They, mean, they, they worked for it. Oh, the problem was with the, the tape wasn't uh, pulled out in time. So now they pull the tape out and they're going to measure that uh, throw, uh, which was the last one there from Omar Sandy. Discus uh, is an event which uh, has its is steeped in history. Even the Greek poet Homer made reference to the event in uh, the classic, uh, the epic, the Iliad, uh, where he described the funeral gains for Patroclus around uh, 800 BC. Uh, if you know your Greek history, Patroclus was uh, killed by uh, the enemy of Achilles. Hector wow. slew uh, Patroclus thinking it was Achilles and then of course Achilles came back and had his revenge on him. Mm. Achilles was of course famously played by Brad Pitt in Brad the movie Pitt, yeah. Troy. <laughs> movie that's still very popular today, 24 very years after so. it was made. Next up to throw is from Yui. Donico Codrington is the next man to throw here in the blue and white of Yui. Codrington is uh, competing in the men's discus throw. And uh, turns in uh, still very much uh, new to this event. Uh, Codrington. And it gets the white flag. Devon Murray looks like the next man to come up here. Another one of the athletes from the University of the West Indies. And what's very creditable, we've seen a lot of the educational institutions having teams. UE has a team here. UTT also UTT. has a team. Um, and always we, we've seen QRC and Fatima College have also produced uh, athletes to compete in these games. Uh, so often we see the emphasis on uh, on academics rather exactly. than uh, producing student athletes yeah. so commendable from both teams from both schools and uh, of course the two universities well, it's 
a little bit of a slow up here in terms of the measuring uh, the distances. Not sure if there's an issue there with the discus, but so this looks, a, is that it for the competition? Seems to be an issue with the tape. <laughs> yeah, the tape is all wrapped up here, in yellow in. tape at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I think, well, they've removed the tape, so I think that could very well be it for the competition there. We'll just eye that for, but just give us a chance to talk a little bit about what we've seen here today. It's been quite a very competitive day, and we've seen some good performances, mm -hmm. but the highlight really has to be uh, the, the seeing the likes of Michel, the Ahi, right. uh, Kyle Grew, and yeah. also Darrell Brown. Brown compete yeah. today. Yeah, it was an excellent day. Um, I'm sure the athletes who would have competed with the, these athletes would have been, you know, a bit starstruck to say, but um, it was really good competition for them just to actually see where they are, you know, in this development meet number three. There's Devon Murray uh, competing for University of the West Indies and uh, St. Augustine campus. Yeah, I, I mean, I was starstruck here seeing the likes of these fine yeah, athletes yeah. from here. Imagine <laughs> you're standing in the lane right next to them. Yeah. Uh, Symphony Patrick, uh, both times I believe, is right next to Michelle Lee Ahi in the events. Yeah. So that's a huge honor for her. Of course, it's a, uh, no matter where her career goes, uh, yeah. she'll always have that moment where I ran against the woman considered the greatest, the greatest uh, athlete yeah, ever in the history of that, DMT yeah. uh, track and field. Yeah, yeah. Of course, she has a chance to stake her own claim for that title yeah. as her career develops. Of course, we saw uh, Elijah Joseph with his 10.70, and um, we had an athlete running 10.50 in the men's 100 meter. That was uh, Jaden D'Souza of Phoenix Athletics. He ran a 10.50 today in the 100 meters, and we had um, Elijah Joseph with 10.70. So those were some of the uh, better times in the 100 meters today. Yes, yeah, certainly the same Elijah Joseph that also. Uh, produced uh, a very good time in the 200 meters. So another yeah. young athlete just poking his head above the top of the wall, just indicating I'm here, have a look at me. And uh, certainly Elijah Joseph. So now about to throw in the men's discus, this is Keenan Alexander of UTT Patriots. Competing in the men's discus throw. That's a legal throw, but not one of his better efforts there. Uh, just the way in which the discus flew through the air, I don't think that he would have been thinking Ryan Krauser at any point during that. Ryan Krauser really has uh, given that sport a huge lift, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> And very interestingly, Ryan Krauser actually coaches himself. Yeah. He does, in fact, uh, coach himself, taking the big step to becoming a coach wow. and uh, coaching himself uh, to titles. Well, if it's, it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dabadi's Kanye Nikki. Is that? Actually, that's one of the women athletes competing here today. Uh, let's see. I uh, saw the Dabadi uniform only to find out that that's Kanye Nikki. That's not Kanye Nikki, actually. Of course, we'll figure that out for you. I think there, there may have been. I think the situation was that one of the ladies, uh, there was only one woman competing, so they've yeah. included her in the field here. Okay.
So a couple of uh, women have been added to the discus throw here just to identify what's happening. So the final rights here almost administered on 2024 track and field series number three. Of course, there are some big events uh, still coming up. There's uh, the World Under-20 Championships, which is taking place later on this year. Uh, there is also the uh, World Relays, which is uh, returning to the Bahamas once again. Always fine, uh, always a great place to compete, the Bahamas. Of, uh, been at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium to do commentary there twice before, and it's a, it's a really, fun, really fun place to work at. Imagine. Then, of course, the big one, the Olympic Games, coming up in June to August, yeah. July to August, correction. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a, uh, certainly another fine spectacle for the first time since 1996, uh, it was. TNT not winning an Olympic medal in 2020, so that was a huge discussion point, as you would remember a yes. couple of years ago. Yeah, most definitely. A very uncertain time. Will Trinidad and Tobago get back on the medal rostrum? Uh, there was a period between 1976 and 1996, Trinidad and Tobago did not win a single medal. Wow. 1976, Hazley Crawford won gold. That's why we have this stadium named after him here. Yeah. But then uh, the next medal came along in 1996. And that's Atta That's Atta Walden winning bronze medals, 100 and 200 meters. And then after that, TNT went on a, a run winning medals at every Olympics until 2016. Wow. No medals won in 2020. And that was a huge... Uh, really displayed the ugly side of uh, supporters still yeah, yeah. a lot of people turned on the team and had a lot of nasty things to say yeah. about the athletes yeah. uh, which was very very unfair you yeah. have to say i mean it was really unfortunate especially for the uh, four by 400 team where one of our athletes we saw uh, pull a hamstring and that was an event that we were short to medal in if not with a gold so a really unfortunate time yeah, it's uh, always uh, get the feeling that uh, people don't uh, they don't like they don't support athletes they support winners, winners yeah. and which is not the right attitude though yeah. support the athletes not just because they win so the a little bit of a lull here in the discus once again So they have included a couple of uh, women athletes to compete. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't been given the names of the women, so real apologies from us here at Wave TV for not being able to identify them. But I think this was a late addition of uh, the women coming in to compete. Pretty good throw there. Yeah, nice looking throw. Because uh, Discus uh, Annie Alexander, as we mentioned, uh, outstanding throw for Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. 
Yeah, just to confirm what I was saying earlier about Annie Alexander, her vest uh, in the discus is actually 58.58 meters. And uh, that's pretty close to pretty the close men's to the record. Man, yeah. There are, there wow. are instances uh, <laughs> in local sport where the women's record is actually pretty close. Uh, pretty close, or if not better, wow. uh, than the yeah. men's record. Uh, I think in the Hamlet's row, that I think that is the case in the Hamlet's row. Yeah, it certainly is the case in the Hamlet's row with Candace uh, Scott. She holds the Hamlet's row record uh, for men and women, wow. in fact, because her record of 71.45 far exceeds the men's record. Wow because not many men have competed in the hammer throw. So it's one of the few instances where the women's record is actually longer than the men's record, wow. a national <laughs> record. So I think they're just about uh, wrapping up here, the discus. There's a little bit of a lull here as they get the next throw out there. I think the women's competition has been added belatedly. The men have uh, ended up competition and uh, there will be one more athlete to throw here for the women's, uh, the Burnley athletes, just about ready to compete. Lulls are getting a bit longer between the throws here and the women's discus throw. I think the men's competition has wrapped up because most of the men are uh, just uh, ambling around, just uh, warming down at the moment. The women's competition continues though. And the athlete from Burnley just uh, at the bottom middle right of your picture, just waiting to get her throw in. There she is. see the discus, uh, the different implements there on the, uh, on the stand, and there she goes. She's just about ready to throw at the moment. Standing, standard deliver. That's a foul. It's a. It's thrown outside of the area there, so that's a foul, and the red flag has been unfurled up just uh, to the right of your picture. You can see it. Yeah, she just uh, threw it from a standing position. Not much of a build up there to actually get that discuss going. Not uh, comfortable with the full motion at the moment, but I'm sure that'll come in eventually uh, with more and more training. So the events on the track have folded, but uh, the events on the field still going on. And uh, there will be one more athlete, I believe, to throw here. Representing QRC. If then, no, that's not QRC. In the blue, in fact. Mm -hmm. It looks like it. It looks like a QRC yeah. uniform, so it might be an athlete. Well, it's not a 10 QRC, but yeah. part of the <laughs> yeah. QRC Athletics uh, yeah. uh, Club. Jasmine Panton is uh, what we're told. Is it QRC? 
And now they belatedly go out to measure the latest throw. It seems that the discus throw event is uh, really is winding down at the moment.
Omar Sandy about to compete once again his next throw and that's uh, he surpassed the last throw that he had there Sandy the, the national champion uh, competing here for UTT Patriots and one of five men competing in the men's discus throw uh, the women's discus throw and uh, five nine uh, competitors there uh, that event was actually supposed to have been staged earlier today but the organizers decided to bring back in that event and uh, have the athletes compete uh, all together so they, yeah. they have phases the men compete then one round of the women and now we're back with the next round of the men's competition so that's what's happening here right now and that's why it's been uh, the discus throw has uh, taken us beyond the time that uh, this meet was supposed to end, but we will be with you until the end here with the men's and women's discus throw event. Next up to compete here uh, from UWE, this is Devon Murray of the University of the West Indies. 
uh, in his uh, third round at the moment. So we're just going to look at the throw here of Devon Murray before we close up uh, coverage here for the day. And Murray's throw very flat and certainly not uh, of the quality that he produced the last time round. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of coverage here today. And uh, Javon, just a final word from you before we close up. Uh, certainly, I'm sure you, you have uh, a couple of highlights to share with us. Well, of course, I'm really impressed with the 100 meter guys. Uh, the, of course, seeing Dal Brown was a, was a treat for us. Um, we had some athletes running 10.50 and 10.70, I think, were the highlights for the 100 meters. Uh, seeing Michelle Yayi today as well was a, a treat, her in the 100 and the 200 meters. You know, the 200 is, is her favorite event. Uh, we had Che Lara dominating in the 400 meter event. That was a highlight. And overall, I'm really impressed to see the amount of athletes from you know, the different clubs across Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, it was really a well-attended uh, development meet. Number yeah, three. I, I just want to add to that. Uh, uh, for me, all of those things that you said, you correctly identified. But seeing the Carifta athletes come yeah. back out yeah. and uh, and uh, compete here, the Vincent twins, uh, for instance, seeing yeah. them compete uh, uh, certainly was good because and uh, Waldron coming and that that victory by Waldron over Nicholas Romani today yeah. yes Romani did run a race half an hour before that yeah. he was a bit jaded after that race he really put out a lot but maybe a changing of the tide oh, uh, in middle yeah. distance running yeah that was that was really exceptional to see uh, Waldron uh, exceptional at least you know you can see that they uh, take the, 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 the sport very seriously and they come out here and they execute and they put on a show for the uh, spectators. And we certainly hope to see more from you. Well, the entry is Series 4 is next Sunday right here uh, at the Hazy Crawford Stadium. And we will have that here for you on Wave TV. There's also EIA football on Saturday. At uh, 9 o'clock. Uh, so we hope that you'll join us for that here on Wave TV. So thank you so much for joining us once again. On behalf of my co-commentator, Javon Brown, and our, our producer, Ian Wason, and our cameraman today, Mr. Gordon, the irrepressible Gordon Peer. thanks so much for joining us here at the Hazy Crawford Stadium. I'm Vidya Ramphal. Goodbye for now. Thank you.